And there we go. Get to enjoy the Mario Kart main theme. Do I get everything which, ready? Uh, which Mario Kart? So I think I played Double Dash today. <laughs> really? Yeah, I've been playing way too much of the other ones, I think. Almost embarrassing. Right, you blick, and everything's a go. Beautiful. All right, I suppose we'll start up with Streamlabs. Uh, scenario for Fringy. You are drafted into the army for the second emu war on the side of your bird brethren, and given the choice of two positions, which do you choose? Frontline infantry or carrier pigeon? Um, I mean, I'm not going to get on the emu side. What? Why, why would you say that? I mean, a hypothetical, right? Yeah. Um, and what? Which which option would I prefer? Frontline or carrier pigeon? Mm-hmm. Um... I feel like... I guess it depends right on which one has a higher survivability. I imagine it would be hard, honestly, to say which one. I don't know. Sorry. I don't know. Um, to be fair, I don't think I'd have an answer for this one. It's like, I don't know which which one best suits the skill set I have, I guess. Mm -hmm. Probably wanna, If I get to choose, I probably want to know more about the nature of each job. Um, I bought a ticket to the Northman and snuck into Doctor Strange 2 afterwards. I thought the Northman was a little overhyped, but it still very much enjoyed it. However, man, was Multiverse of Madness a clusterfuck made me appreciate the Northman more. Oh, I can think of a movie that gets appreciated in reference to Multiverse of Madness. Can you guys think of one? Yeah, I think I You know, can. I just might be able to. Oh my god. We uh, just gotta make... No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I bought a... Uh, oh, wait, yeah. Hi, Mola. Hi, Rag. Just wanted to ask, what's your perfect Sunday? Hello. My perfect Sunday? Mm -hmm. Um... My perfect Sunday... Um, so... I think it's important that this doesn't necessarily mean that this happens every Sunday because you don't want to overdo it, right? But every every once in a while, I don't know, uh, wake up, start off there, or maybe just never wake up, just sleep all day. But um, let's see, we wake up. Um, Gosh, there's so many different ways. Sun, I'm, I'm. Oh, doing great so, so many far. things I like. Yeah, we we've woken up. So, gosh, it could be anything. From just, it's a nice day. You feel, you feel just good. You feel healthy, and you're not sick, and you've got energy, and you're not tired. And sometimes you just want to sit down in front of your computer and play a game with your friends all day and maybe drink a soda pop and just just have a day where you zone out and play games with your friends and some days you want to get really social physically right you want to go out to a, a dinner or take someone to the zoo or you want to just be with someone physically um, and it's someone you just chat with about anything who's laid back and easygoing um, gosh, I don't know what my perfect Sunday would be. I enjoy all kinds of different things. It's a, it's tough to say. It's kind of tough to say. Yeah, mine's like, my answer's equally, oh, this is similar in that I probably want a combination of all the things I enjoy in the day. I don't think I have anything that I specifically keep for a Sunday, you know, as opposed to a good day. Um... I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure they they forgot to ask you for any. That's that's all. I'm well, sure they were very interested in your answer. I didn't ask, so I'll abstain from mm -hmm. answering because you didn't ask me. It's okay. The account name was Jim yeah, Messenger, said, by the way. You should have been like, "Fuck you!" I'm telling you anyway. Nah, it's okay. He didn't, didn't want to know. The the account name was Tim Messenger, by the way, for you. Okay. Yeah. That's. Uh, you just didn't want to know. It's fine. Tim no, I'm not saying it because of that. The reference. Oh, wait. I, I'm not getting it. It's early. <laughs> <Off those. laughs> 
Oh, that's right. Yeah, the journalist. Hmm. Yeah. Tin messenger. Uh, banana fact of the day. Did you know that Doctor Strange Two: Multiverse of Madness sucks? Yeah. Is that, is that like does that in relation to banana facts? Is that like how bananas feel about that film? Is that what it means? Banana as a as a class, just like you know what that, that Doctor Strange. Was yeah, I can believe out. it. I can believe it too. Yeah. Um, how did every Doctor Strange end up as a sorcerer? Didn't he only go down that path from a freak car accident that specifically fucked up his hands? But I guess that's on the lower end yeah. of countless problems. I mm -hmm. am okay with that, because there are infinite universes where he became a sorcerer. Um, yeah, it, however, it would be filed under the same problems as the fact they enter a universe that has fucking breathable air in it. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, if you know what I mean, like, it kind of gets... Uh brushed off as a problem because in that format of issues there is a fucking lot to a talk lot about. More. Yeah. Um uh, whenever you guys get around to discussing Star Wars the Clone Wars, you should get a Mandalore on, since you guys aren't familiar with the EU. He really knows his stuff and could explain how it completely destroyed the extended canon at the time. Hashtag justice for the EU and high ranks. Can't see any Hi. reason why we would talk about the Clone Wars. I, I'm not yeah, I just don't. Uh, like, there's yeah, gonna be so really... much Star Wars shit just pumping out that um, I can't see myself ever going back to that. And, and I didn't watch it in the first place, you know, so. Nobi is so close now, everybody. So <laughs> close, Great. I can almost paste it. Cassian Andor is also close. It is close. And they're already That's filming right. Ahsoka, so yeah, Star Wars is in a great place. Right, everyone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as yeah. it has been for many years now. Many yeah. years now. Content, content, content. Um, Wanda in the multi-musical of madness. He lied to me. He hates me. Reality. Sorcery. Hypocrisy. Sorcery. The Doctor Strange is my enemy. Oh, the misery. Multiverse wants to be my enemy. Yeah, man, get Pharrell on the soundtrack, and we'll be we'll be fine. Uh, remember when Thor two was the worst Marvel film, uh, MCU film? Nah, because I Iron Man 3 yeah, I always hate Iron Man three more than Thor two. <laughs> I just don't I I don't remember latching onto anything in Thor two. Nobody, Nobody does, yeah. <laughs> That's it's why it's often rated movie. worse, is because it doesn't... The feeling people remember is nothingness, which is not what you want to get from a movie. No. Oh, maybe that was the, the answer to that question. Remember we got one before, it was like, has a movie ever left you apathetic? It's like, maybe Thor 2. That's a good it was, one. It was emotionally, okay. um, numb? Kinda, is what they're saying, I think yeah. they said. I think it's what they're saying, yeah. It probably wasn't numb, but it's probably the closest I've gotten to that. Where I was just like, okay, that was a film. I think mm -hmm. most movies leave me emotionally numb in the sense that I just I just don't feel any emotions. Why didn't you say that? Most? Us, like, really? Most movies make you numb. I'm numb in the sense that I just don't feel anything in that regard. Damn. I feel like numb is more than, like, not having any strong feeling one way or the other, you know? That's numb? Well, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I think that it's not... That, not that. I feel like numb. It's like empty. Oh, right, right. Yeah, that's what I thought. If, if, a film, if I'm indifferent to a film, I don't think I'm empty. I'm just like, eh, yeah, you know. I would say, the depends, I mean, emotionally empty, I, I think it's, I, I think it's pretty easy to be emotionally empty if you feel like neutral about something. It's, I, I'd say that's emotionally empty. It depends on the nature it, of the neutrality, it, right? What if don't... I say, like, there's some good stuff, but there's also some really bad stuff. I feel kind of neutral on it. Uh, de depends if it's, I, I get if you're talking about, like, does it balance out, I don't know if, about balancing out, but in terms of just, that you know, just don't get a feeling emotionally out of it really any, anyway, I'd say it's uh, emotionally numb. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, the Thor 2 is probably one of the closest I get to that, because I just don't, that's really not a common reaction for me with films, I usually feel something. Yeah, like, usually with a movie, it's it's pretty rare that I'll actually be indifferent. Like, after I've watched it, there'll usually be some sort of yeah, perspective if, on it. 
If the film doesn't have one, there's usually at least a character that has a perspective that I either agree with or disagree with or feel something toward well, and would thus want to think about. Thing ...that's interesting, or the writing, or the genre, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always something for my brain to latch onto and start rolling with, but yeah, Thor 2 is a movie where I'm struggling. I'm like, oh yeah, I guess there was, there was a weird one. It should be studied, Thor 2. Uh, <laughs> it's an interesting film in that nobody cares about it at all. <laughs> it's an interesting film in how uninteresting it is. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, honestly, is it even possible to name three good things from Phase 4 that isn't from Spider-Man No Way Home? Good things. Things? Like, if there are individual elements, I think there's a couple of things... Oscar is exacting. Can... Yeah, I was gonna say, I well, think I mean, we can... Yeah. If we allow acting them, we're fine. Yeah. The problem We're talking about story stuff. Universe is not acting. Yeah, if it's like a, you have to do a writing compliment. Um, there's even stuff in Moon Knight. There's stuff to compliment here and there. Yeah, uh -huh. there is. Um, but no, you're, you're right. Most of the phrase right now is going to No Way Home, probably. Yep. Bring his mics a bit low. He's, he's tired. He's tired. You're gonna have to squint with your ears, just a mm -hmm. little bit. Alrighty, so that's it for the Streamlabs uh, up to today. We are now on to the uh, the Doctor Strange second stream Super Chats. Here we go. Does Treaties Manifesto Treaties Manifesto? Huh? Treaties Manifesto? Yeah, I'm lost on that one. Yeah, I just, yeah. Uh, let's get it on now. Select and take your best pick. Let's get it on now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Let's get it on now. Choose and pick the best one. Let's get it on now. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Nope, I'm lost on that too. Man, these weren't even that long ago. No. <laughs> Today's animal of the day is the mantis shrimp. Look up its punch. Yeah, I've heard about this guy. Yeah. Afraid I can't show pictures because Dolphin gets all spingly about it. Uh, you guys right, in the audience will have to use your googling powers if you want to see the mantis shrimp. Sweet. They do that thing where they kick with their front, I don't know, they, the front arms, and it's. Isn't that them? Or is that the bullet shrimp? Unclear. So many shrimps, I can't keep them straight. Mm hmm. Antish shrimp. Uh. How. Yeah, this is the mantis shrimp. They, they can. They punch with their little front claws. And they, they could go like 60 miles an hour or something like that. Hmm. Cool. Uh, it says that the peacock mantis shrimp has the hardest punch relative to its size. Well, that's it says if, cool. if a if a person if, if we scaled them, uh, a person would be able to throw a baseball into the orbit of the Earth. Damn. Those guys are pretty cool, huh? Do not make them upset. They will punch you. They will punch you. What kind of damage could they do hard. to a person? I don't know. I imagine. I guess it depends on how much. Because that's speed. I wonder how much yeah. actual force is behind it. Like if the arms are. Can a mantis shrimp kill a human? Punch even though mantis heart. shrimp injuries are. Oh, it says even though a mantis shrimp injuries uh, is painful and severe. I've never killed a human. A human, however, can die if they are allergic to a mantis shrimp and suffer anaphylactic shock after eating one. Oh. Oh, it also, also you could choke on one. Uh, so, uh. It's like yeah. it tries to punch you to death, it fails, then you eat it and it kills you that way. And it's like, ha! Fucking got you. Great ape my ass. And then you eat them. And then they get Raw. you with the with with the allergies. The last yeah. laugh is mine. Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe is great. That's what I hear. I look forward to playing it at some point. I will get to it. It'll happen. 
Hi, Wombo. I've been dealing with cancer this past year, and this show's been getting me through it, so thanks, Massives. Also, hi, Rags. Hi. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, hope you're doing all right. Uh, yeah. Fighting through. Cancer's one of them yeah, things that luck. basically everyone hates. Um, yeah, glad to provide any kind of alleviation. Whatever it is you're going through, man. Hope you're doing okay. Good luck. Um... Hey, Gary, just wanted to let you know, I DM'd you a while ago with my first ever pixel art. Don't know if you've seen it. Sorry if DMing you was inappropriate. I wasn't sure how else to send it. Uh, well, you could try him on Twitter, like, adding him um, with it. Hopefully that works. I think he responds to a lot of fan art stuff that way. Um, Wings quote of the day. what they call me yesterday? The Myrtle Beach Manatee? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Dude, I got, uh, in my recommended, it was like, uh, meet the 940 pound woman. And I was wow. just like, so that's clickbait, right? Like, can you even be alive at 940? I don't know what the record for weight is. Um, but I was like, surely that, that is it? Because I've never heard of anyone heavier than that. Have you guys? 940? Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. That's like... That's like nine slender women all at once. <laughs> and, um, yeah, yeah uh, it, it begins with it being like, yeah, I didn't have a good night's sleep last night. I peed myself twice and I'm starting to get chest pains. It's like, um. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, God, what do you even do with it? 940 pounds. Yeah. I need a robot body. Hell yeah, uh, the future will take care of that at some point, I'm sure. Just not yet, unfortunately. Um, bonus. Actually, I have a McDouble right here. Grabs bag of McDonald's from the floor. <laughs> I'm sure, uh, Bill Wings has, uh, has good standing with McDonald's, right? Doesn't he get, um, people, people order him food? I, I think so. And then, obviously, sometimes they'll order him, like, just burgers without it just buns because uh, you can't do that but then sometimes people will just legit get him food I think right so man you gotta wonder about that like reverse engineering like oh gosh I'd hate for you guys to send me food to my house <laughs> yeah. that'd be real lame <laughs> <laughs> when they actually said you shit food you're like oh fuck's sake <laughs> damn Uh, the Halo games ask the questions, but not directly. It has a lot of subtext. Um, I don't know if I'd say it's subtext. It's more so just that a lot of, um, a lot of what's part of the games is not, like, a lot of the universe is in the background. It's not, it doesn't call much attention to itself. It's there for you if you want to look into it, but otherwise you can enjoy Halo pretty much, like, as a very straightforward story. Mm -hmm. Um, the show is a lot more pretentious, um, it thinks it has something oh, really meaningful to say, but... Very far up its own ass. Yeah, um... Yeah. Dude, it's Blue like, Shell just flew past me and I'm first. What the hell? Alright, that must be a bug. That would've fucked me up, too. But oh well. Um, of course it would've, it's a Blue Shell. There's no escape except in Mario Kart 8. No, the, I mean, the... it would've cost me first place. Ah. Yes, I see. Well, good thing the game, like, good thing they spared me. Favor. Um, metal isn't crying in the art. Objectively bad. Not so much he was enjoying uh, Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. Or perhaps. Faces of old medals, mm -hmm. like Alumnus, and they're all there, like, yay! It's the aluminium universe. It's pretty cute. Yeah. Ugh. Freaking chain chomp. Uh, they, should, they should bring back those, uh, like, mega suit. Uh, it's probably too hard now because there's too many characters. Like, bring back those, uh, special, like, items. The well, that's why specifically. playing Boo and Piranha, uh, PT Piranha is the best because they get all of them. Yeah, it's, like, um... Oh, yes. Did any of you play, uh, Crash Tag Team Racing? No. Did you ever play no. 
Yeah, that game, um, I remember the, the, the combo, the correct combo for that game was, um, Engine and, uh, I think it was Nina Cortex, like, because those two characters. The way that game works is, like, you play as an individual racer, but then you can, uh, combine your vehicle with another racer, and then you have one person driving, one person shooting. Um, that game had a problem in that, like, Engine and Nina just had the best weapons. Um, Engine had a rocket launcher and Nina had a shotgun and they were both like one hit kills when you hit the enemies. So like all you need to do is play as um, like Engine and then combine your vehicle with like someone else and then get them to drive while you blow every single car up and once you get right to the end um, separate your vehicles because you get a boost and then you just win. So like it's like instant win every time. That was a bit um, broken, though. Like, uh, yeah, I would say so. I remember when I was younger, I just, I was like, man, I think, yeah, because when I was younger, for as much as I enjoyed that game, I'm like, yeah, this is, like, broken. You just, you win. <laughs> like, it's just play as engine, and then find a vehicle, and then combine your vehicles, and then you win. <laughs> like, it's, it's really easy. Um, CTR is the best crash game, and possibly the best kart racer ever, at least mechanically. Um, yeah. It'd be nice if there were more Crash games, but... Oh, well, I guess maybe under an even larger monopoly under Microsoft, maybe it will. Sweet. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder if... Oh, I'm just watching this footage. Um, I wonder if, like, it was intentional that if you drift, you can uh, avoid red shells. I wonder if that was on purpose or... Like, I hope it mistake. is, because it feels satisfying when you do it. Uh, yeah, I think it's, um, I wonder if, like, Mario Kart should try harder to implement ways to, um, avoid... Raise the skill ceiling? Well, yeah, because I think, uh, Mario Kart Wii, uh, if you time a boost correctly, you can actually boost out of a blue shell, uh, explosion. Hmm. So, and I think that's not on purpose, but, like, I don't, you know, I think that's a good, a good feature, honestly. Double bonus. I never said Elon Musk was a bad person, just a bad businessman. He just sells ideas. He's only rich because he sold PayPal. Apparently that's from Wings. Uh... <laughs> uh, hi, Mortal and Rag. Hi! Given Avatar 2 is coming out later this year, are you guys gonna watch the first Avatar for EFAP movies? Maybe a full Avatar arc? I think it would be... Good movie, free fab movies, so there's uh, potential. I mean, I'm definitely gonna. I, I was actually re watching some clips from that film yesterday, and when I was watching, all I thought is, you know what, maybe this film is like better than I remember it or give it credit for. There's a lot of like neat stuff in, in, in those movies. Hmm. Um, or in that movie. Um, I, it's, I think the main takeaway I got is that the world seems a hell of a lot bigger than, um, than what was presented in that film, which is kind of. Again, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see about Avatar. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely want to rewatch it, and if we do a free fun movie, it's cool with me. Doctor Strange is an ironic movie to come out during the Roe v. Wade controversy. Wanda getting baby rabies and getting PMS powers is hilarious. Um, I don't think that was. I would have never drawn the connection <laughs> myself if you hadn't said anything. Uh, hear about the Kenobi finale leaks? Yikes. Yes. Unfortunate. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I'm almost certain that's gonna happen. But, oh well. Don't know why we would expect anything else. Yeah. Um, today I learned Metroid 2 has Yumbo and Mumbo enemies. That's good. Good that they have that. Representation. <laughs> more Yumbo representation. Lord Longbong of Muslington Abbey, have you given any more thought to a Kong fab of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on, it'd be a movie fab for the ages. Yes. Oh well, Wagsies. Scritches for the good boy. Oh, thank you very much. Um, we have considered often. Yeah. They were considered yeah. good old Long Kong. Peter Kong. Kong King Jackson Kong. It's I don't see why not. I gotta imagine it'll do better in terms of uh, us having a look see that than Godzilla vs. Kong, for example. Um, so perhaps one day an arc shall happen. 
they told Nolmies about Earth 616. Do you mean the movie? Because yeah, Mysterio had a little little fun reference, but now it's more canon, unless well, of course you just canon. treat everything yeah. she said in that unit. You know what? The, the people who said it's the dumb universe where everything is wrong, stupid, and idiotic. It's like, oh, I guess okay. I so guess it's you not can. The 616 yeah. <laughs> so you want to count for it that way. The Night's Watch pointed out Sanderson's laws of magic. The author's ability to resolve conflicts in a satisfying way with magic is directly proportional to how the reader understands said magic. I think that goes for Sorry. everything. How much we can understand mechanically what's happening is proportional to our satisfaction with it, typically speaking. But even then, it's not necessarily true. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. it's probably better to give an audience uh, the understanding that they need. Uh, err on the side of doing that, you know? Yeah, just, you know, you got a guy who's pretty strong, he's pretty buff, and a guy who's real weak, but he has a gun, and they both dropped into a jungle. Like, we were already like, alright, I understand. And, yeah, either one could win. Yep. You know, it, that's like one of the simplest ways of trying to explain, like, yeah, just, you want to get your viewers in a position where they can understand how the different events will unfold. Uh, Doc Strange 2 is one of the worst things in existence for this principle. Like... I have n when it's like, well, at least Doctor Strange can portal out and his, his, his sling ring disappears, like, okay. Oh, I guess he can't <laughs> portal out. I guess he can't, yeah. I wonder if Michael Waldron would go as far as saying, yeah, see, that's us using the principle. We let them know that's not a possibility. <laughs> He's like, alright. Uh, and like, what's happened with the writing? Like, what, what, what happened? What the fuck? Indeed. We just don't care anymore. Uh, lucky that the 73 universes all had breathable air. Yeah. There's, uh, it's too much to even account for in terms of the luck. It's insane. Mm -hmm. Especially when she has no means of controlling which universe she goes Again, to. Again, well, if only there were, like, a yeah. movie that kind of addresses similar well, things and, and goes over the kinds of differences you could get in a much more meaningful way. And does something with it, you mean? Like, and doesn't even point. rely on those differences in order to resolve the conflict. Yeah, that's um, that sounds like a really elusive, mysterious, magical movie. That, that doesn't you know, exist, for sure. No, that doesn't exist and didn't come out at around the same time as Doctor Strange and the Monster Girls and Madness. Mm-hmm. Uh, more than we made a voting process on Reddit. 32 votes said no to playing Revengeance, and 170 million votes said yes. Go ahead, Molly, you have the green light. I'll uh, do it at some man. point. I'm up for that. The entire voting population of the United States watch. <laughs> hey, man, you know, if, that's, if that's what the people want, I wouldn't want to be the one to stop them. Metal Gear Rising is a cool game. Yeah. Um... Uh... The Don, Agatha Harkness, U.S. Agent, Defender Strange, and now Pizza Papa. We're assembling a team. Yeah, of like, punished civilians. To be only, fair, well, Agatha's probably the only one out of the lot that's got at least an evil streak to her in some way. Like, the true, others didn't kill a dog for no reason, you know? But then again, was the dog even real? I don't know. Oh yeah, was, oh, I guess the dog... Yeah, we don't know. We don't know... Hmm... I assume the dog was real. Remember, Agatha's fucking origin story is her getting attacked by a bunch of witches, and then yeah, she kills them all, and it's just like, is, is this an defense? evil origin? <laughs> like, oh, I guess she did something evil before that, because it seemed like she was really upset. Like, yeah, uh, I don't know, it was weird, but, uh, yeah, I the... Remember it, I remember that, I never watch it. You can also throw Superior Strange in there, by the way. Uh... Uh, yes, he's another one of those. He's another legend heroes. who got fucked over by his stupid universe. Um, I think I came up with a way for America Chavez to exist. Maybe she exists in all points in history as uh, as once for any given universe. I, 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 problem is like I don't want to say that that's like a, not an idea that makes sense to me at all. But like I don't know what. I don't know how that helps with the incursion thing. What difference exists in all points in history at once? I feel like that causes a lot more problems if she exists at all points in history at once. I, I think I, I just I don't think I understand like what they're trying to. I don't see how that solves anything. It just makes things <laughs> like really hard to follow. I guess. Yeah. 
Um, some people are mentioning She-Hulk in chat. It was cringe. That trailer was cringe. All right, everyone knows it. Um, <laughs> well, it seems like that's the one that sort of pushed people to go like, oh yeah, like Marvel does have like a problem with visual effects right now. Like they're just, I, I don't know. Which so, like that's the, it's a perfect storm of all these factors. It's a television show that will have a smaller budget spread out over a longer amount of time with a main character who's going to be largely a CG character on a condensed timeline in the middle of a, a known period of intense like backlogs and visual effects houses kind of like a perfect storm of all these things to go wrong um, but I mean I doubt they're going to delay it they're probably still going to release it and it'll probably still do reasonably well for them yeah uh, I'm more concerned with just yeah, to be fair, like, I don't think I'd even give a shit about the shitty CGI if I thought the show was going to be good. I'd yeah, get over but I mean, it, but... I don't know why we'd have any real reason to do... I mean, it's it's <laughs> funny, because the concept that you have there of... Oh, we got to look at, like, the legal ramifications of superheroes. Like, that could be really cool um, in terms of a lot of concepts you could explore. But beyond surface level, like, meaningful exploration of how the law would change... You had to account for people who were like super strong or like impervious to harm or I think I mentioned it to Morley yesterday. I imagine like, I don't know, Deadpool wanted to sue, like, I don't know, he wants to die or something. He's like Mr. Meeseeks and now he can't because of some experiment that was done on him and then he wants to sue someone. It's like, could you imagine exploring those concepts? That they won't. <laughs> like, no. you know, or like, what does it mean for someone to act in self-defense if they're like a Captain America equivalent strength? Um, there's just so many things that you could explore, but they won't because it's Marvel. <laughs> um, <sighs> speaking of bad TV shows, I just watched Fargo Season 4. A character dies by tripping up and accidentally shooting himself because the writers didn't want him around for the climax. Even the UFO did was they, better. Yeah. They did that in uh, World War Z, remember? Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> really funny, that one. Because you can't even, you don't even for sure know what happened. It's just like, yeah, he shot himself. You're like, Oh, okay. Uh, okay, yeah. Funnily enough, I have another reference, and I'm not even sure why I know this. I think it was someone sent me the video. Oh, or I was interested in Michael Ironside. So he's in, temporarily, uh, Desperate Housewives. And okay. my memory is so stretched thin that I'm going to do the best I can here. But someone in their little suburb is keeping a slave in their, like, basement. And he oh. he's there like in the neighborhood to search for that person but undercover he's just like oh i'm just a chill fun dude but he's actually doing that and like at the climax of him finally breaking in he sees the basement and the door and someone yelling for help and so he rushes down the stairs wooden stairs while holding a gun and it breaks one of the slats he falls through and accidentally shoots himself in the stomach and dies that's man why, I remember thinking, why? like, this sounds like one of the least satisfying things ever. <laughs> like, why would anyone fucking like this? That's so lame. Like, it, it sucks bad enough when a character who's, like, got one goal finally gets to that goal and then is killed by someone, but someone with a reason that's set up to be interested in killing them, but when they accidentally kill themselves, like, oh. Okay. Yeah, it's just lame. Yeah. Um, thank you guys so much for what you do. EFAP has improved my writing in ways I can't imagine. Oh, wow. Glad oh. to hear it. Yeah. Keep it up. Well, well keep you up. You write writing. them stories. Um, Hale, how many bees do you think I can fit inside of my Dachhound? Dachhound? Um, uh, well, it's spelled all weirdly. Like Dachshund? Dachshund? Um, it might be that. It, 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 what I mean by spelt all weirdly is it's literally like none of these are letters. Uh, oh, I I couldn't tell least... you how many bees could fit in there. They might I be letters, but in a different language, I, it's hard to decipher this. I don't, you shouldn't have had any problem posting if if it is because it with bees as well, but that one's easy to read. But, uh, yeah, I don't know how many bees fit in a dog. I, I, it's not something I really need to know the answer to, you know? Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Ari Paint and Cubic Universe. Changing universes seems to transmute your body to obey the laws of physics in the new universe. Not always. It looks like no. sometimes it just doesn't do anything at all. Why? And is there any reason to believe that that's... If, if her powers also change matter... Or, or what? That if you're in that universe, why would that be the way that it works, necessarily, anyway? Well, I guess because, like, we're shown that they turn into paint in the paint universe and animated what? in the animated universe, but... At the same time, there's like zero changes to them whatsoever. Like, you know, Strange when he moves into the Illuminati universe doesn't have a blue cloak suddenly or anything like that. He's just himself. And um, yes. at the same time, when you have Electro comes to the new No Way Home world, he's different. He's part of the... That's what I meant. Oh, so, right. yeah. Right, I... uh, all I guess we can conclude is that sometimes it'll change you, sometimes it won't. Sometimes it won't. Uh, this is how Covenant War starts. Chief accidentally walks in a memory lane in front of the Covenant and it shows him banging the spy, 10 out of 10. Uh. Well, it would be, he walks in memory lane and he, he's he got this really fun memory of being in Earth and jumping around and pick, picking flowers. And then he goes, man, I love being on Earth, coordinates, blah, 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 in this sector of this space. And then the Covenant like, we have it. Yeah. <laughs> be a great season finale. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm kind of annoying that people look at, like, the trailer for the next episode. They're like, oh, look, they're, like, in Sand Trap. Isn't that cool? It's like, have you guys forgotten, like, what we've seen? The <laughs> they thing? literally have. Though, give them... They need a few weeks after the finale's aired for you for them to come around to your well, side, yeah, okay? You know how it works. Well, the finale's probably going to have some big fan service moments of, like, I don't know, Chief's probably going to grab a gravity hammer and, like, bash a brute's brains out. And everybody's going to think that's really cool. Um, but then, yeah, you just let the whole story sink in. It's like, man, what a disaster. And it is. Episode 8 is, like, a catastrophe. There's so much wrong with it. Like, the UNSC might be the most incompetent military, like, fictional military. What about the First story. Order? They can't go up. That's, that's true. They can't go up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so I funny because you're like, up. no, I'm sure they're more, they're more intelligent than... You're like, can't go... Okay, well... Damn. Oh, up. Yeah, that's, uh, pretty bad. I love the responses to that, like, well, yeah, up is relative. It's like, yeah. Guys, it's, <laughs> it's, it's badly written. It's, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not good. Uh, I metal, kick Mola, and hail the Sith Lord Rags. Wow. Hail? I, I didn't even know I was a, a Sith Lord. Neat. I didn't even know. Not only lazy exposition, but also horrifying. Uh, presumably the the memory thing, and kinda, yeah. I, dude, if I started, like, if I walked past the thing and it just randomly started playing, like, HD fucking clips of my childhood memories or some shit, I'd be like, um, stop, please. This feels like a gross violation. Yeah, and it's, if it's like, don't worry, it's just you playing with some Hot Wheels. I'm like, D I didn't fucking, d stop. I, did, I never, didn't ask for this. <laughs> And they're just like, oh, well, yeah, all right, fine, I guess. Please pay now. <laughs> like, no. No, thanks, I'm good. Um, hi from the Czech Republic. Hello. Hey. Hi. Muller, have you ever heard of Ozark? I think you would appreciate their good writing. I've heard of it, but I haven't watched it. I think it's on uh, its final season now. It's Jason Bateman and um, uh, 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 Laura Linney. Hmm. Um, I hear this good. Man, that was a long shot red shell. Uh, especially to Ragsies. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm sending my love. Oh, thank you. You're the special love. Oh, how oh boy. How very, how very exciting. Oh, I just got a fist. That was oh, close. Nice. Um, Good job. No Way Home is overrated. Possibly. Uh, not by us, though, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm not sure if it is anymore with how much people shit on the filmmaking. Now I'm not so Well, the problem is, like, group. people will say, they'll write a whole essay about how horribly terrible everything is about it visually, and then say, so it's more like a 7 or 8 out of 10, okay, guys? And you're like, uh, yeah, oh. True, true. 
Also, America Chavez, first Mexican superhero is a multiversal immigrant, 10 out of 10 writing. Um, I don't think they, uh, they were going for that, you see. She, you could argue that they're arguing the reverse. Her home is everywhere, though the incursion thing kind of, uh... It defeats that message. Kind of fucks it all up, yeah. Yeah, but they, they forgot about the incursion, or they wrote it after they'd shot lots of the movie, I imagine. It's almost saying, why didn't you guys bring up the fact that, like, Loki's a show can't even function at all now? Because wherever all of the TFA, T, TFA, TVA people and Loki and everyone else, wherever all of them go, they, aren't they causing an incursion? No, they're beyond time and space or something. <laughs> That's always a good cop out. Just, no, no, they're beyond time and space. <laughs> it's kind the of thing funny, is, but... if you're born in the TV, TVA world, maybe I could understand that to some fucking degree, but Loki is, like, legit yeah. from one of these worlds. But also, so are all of the TVA people, remember? Oh yeah, they're all kidnapped from us. So, yeah, no, none of this makes sense. None of them talked to each other when they made this. They don't care Even about anything. Literally the same dude who wrote both. He didn't talk to himself when he made this. Or he forgot, or he didn't care. I love how all of this is predicated then on Reed Richards may just be the stupidest fuck He's in the universe totally and, and made and all of this them. up. And they killed their friend for nothing. Even though he got the information from Doctor Strange, another person who is incredibly intelligent. It's just like, uh Nah, I guess not. I guess not. There's only one multiverse movie worth a damn, and it's Jet Li's The One. A guilty pleasure, sure, but I'd, uh, it'd make a one fap for the ages, etc. Oh, don't you worry. There is another film. There's another multiverse movie that's pretty, pretty good, and it's not a guilty pleasure one either, it's just a... Uh... Just straight up awesome. Yeah, hypothetically, this film doesn't exist. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, hate to think what would happen if Chavez ported to a universe populated by nothing but bears. Oh no, bees, sorry. Oh, the trauma. Well, she just open up another portal and then leave. But she's have a horde of bees with her. <laughs> this yeah. is seriously what was missing from this film. A scene where she drags a whole bunch of things from different universes into other universes and they all, like, clash in fun ways. I think, um, I think it briefly happened when they went to, like, the, the water world. And then when they teleported out, some fish just sort of like fly out, but like that's... Oh yeah, I'm talking about a story, like you have even... Yeah. Imagine a Chitari general who like actually starts having to talk to him. Mm -hmm. And he's cool, like, just but... get me back to my fucking world, like... I don't want to deal with your multiverse adventures, I just want to conquer. Like, like he aims his gun at both of them, and you know, it kind of woke up strange just uses magic, but if it's like, you know, kill her and you'll never get back to your home. And he's just like, fuck. <laughs> Yeah. Make a whole crew, a whole crazy crew of all kinds of characters. And they don't need to be cameos, they can be like just characters from the Marvel Universe. Yeah. Like, you know, one-off characters that we never see again. It doesn't need to be cameos. The options weren't cameos or nothing at all, alright? So <laughs> that. Yeah, and... It's, there's just so much potential, and instead we spent so much time doing bullshit. Yeah. You know the whole memory lane scene? Like, I would have just rewritten it to have them walking from, well, not walking, running from A to B. And then these, like, these facts slip out because they're exasperated. Like, yeah. You know, how did this start? And then she just, like, won't tell him. And, you know, the next time he asks, he, like, needs to know to understand her power to teach her more about it. He needs to know how it works. It's like, this all, you've got it all written out for you. I feel like this story's been done before many times. There's lots of people. Yeah, like written the stories. Template. Yeah, like we Someone's got to teach someone how to make better use of their abilities. Damn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty <sighs> goddamn cool. Uh, my friend said Captain Carter lasted as long as she did because Wanda was insane and wanted to fist fight her. Oh, okay. Um, this even is though... even worse than the arrogant excuse people use. Where it's like, the Hux did everything he did because he's arrogant. Shut up. Now is she's she's insane. So whatever she does is confirmed to be the thing that she would do because she's insane. That's what a great cop out. So yeah, it's a great writing tool actually. Make your villain insane. I could see that being a filmento tip where he's like, make your villain insane so that they can then do anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Even though she's. <laughs> Got magic and realistically wouldn't last two seconds. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I don't even know why she speaks to her. 
at one point after the fight has had its like first half or whatever. It's like, what are you doing? Just kill you. Mordo's entire villain arc revolves around him being a fool that doesn't understand the ramifications of Dormammu breaching into our world. Which I don't believe. I don't I don't think it makes sense that he doesn't understand. And if you want to put him down that pathway, then you have to have that conversation. It's like, would you prefer yeah. the whole universe be swallowed by Dormammu then? And he has to say no. So then what do you do? Maybe they'll have that conversation in Doctor Strange 3. Ugh, maybe. Now that he's what, dead, probably. Because they changed their mind. Um, yeah, I don't know if they, if that was part of the decision, was that they were like, we have a really good actor here, let's keep him. Because that would yeah, certainly be my fucking motivation to keep Mordo. I'd be like, be let's, let's give him a whole movie to be the villain. And we really need to work hard to fix him, because he's not looking great yeah. right now. I'm guessing that was probably the plan, but then they decided to do multiverse instead. And the reality is, next time around, it probably won't be him. It'll probably be, like, Nightmare or Mephisto or something. It'll be some crazy... And even more blowout. cameos. Yeah. Thinking about how OP the Mirrorverse is, could they have just stuck America in there? Is that something Wanda has access to? Hell, why not hide everyone in the Mir Mirrorverse? Yeah, that's something I, I think... Uh, Rags, you, you talked about it on the stream, I think, at one point. Just, can we put her in the mirror this is that something that yeah because just because wanda can break out somehow doesn't mean that she can get, get in, in right? yeah i'm sure that in this this world of extremely uh rigid uh rules of magic uh, they couldn't just write her coming in and uh, solve all those problems uh... <laughs> bowser just fucking killed himself that looked great <laughs> but okay that's all fine um my friends also said Wanda wanted the Illuminati to suffer. They actually spelt it as surfer. That's just funny, but I'm pretty sure they- <laughs> They wanted to surf her. Uh, that's why she killed him so quickly. Suspicious people face. That doesn't make sense. But she didn't <laughs> like... kill them quickly. She killed, yeah, she killed them painfully in the case of Mr. Fantastic. Well, I guess that lines up with the idea that she wants them to suffer, but why in the world would she want them to suffer? I thought she wanted to be reasonable. And she didn't enjoy killing people. That's what she said anyway, but I guess not. She changed her mind. Maybe. In fact, she's actually crumboculous. <laughs> uh, you know, oh boy. <laughs> Here I go again. Uh, when she said my two mothers, some girl in my theater went, aww, I wanted to throw up. What's the well, it's, it's just... Wait, what? Oh. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was mixing them up. I thought they were like, oh, when Wanda sub story. <laughs> no, the two mothers for America. I, I, ah. I, I don't care. Like, oh, right, I just, I'm neutral. I'm more interested in the idea that she yeah. apparently comes from a world of only women. That's, uh, that's what Gary said is the comic version or whatever. Well, I think, uh, I think that character's history gets retconned like a lot. He also said that, yeah. The, yeah. They've already because changed some of it. Comics, people change their minds a lot about like, mm -hmm. what their history of the character is. You're lucky when you get something like Batman Year One or Daredevil, um, The Man Without Fear, where like, it, well, and then Daredevil Yellow, but they actually sort of slot in nicely. Daredevil was lucky. He's actually quite lucky when you think about his comics continuity. He's currently He's lucky. lucky in live action now. He's lucky but ending yeah. what happened because like. He's, like, rumored to show up in multiple upcoming projects that are happening. It gets um, me nervous. That's the thing, I'm sure Carly, Carly? Damn. Charlie Cox is more than on board, so... I'm, well, yeah, but I mean, you gotta hope on, you can push for the character to be consistent. Well, you need the writers to back him, yeah. You just need, you just need competent writers. Um... Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do fantasies or dreams count as memories? What if a CIA operative walked by and something highly classified was broadcast for everybody? Hi, Rags. Hello. Don't know. They didn't go into detail. They just said significant memories. And uh, they seem to be able to take... So, for example, if she gave him that watch, and that watch is actually... It belongs to someone else and she stole it. Um, or rather he... Maybe, uh, point being, there's someone in the world who needs to not know that watch is there at that time. No one in the memory store could know that. Um, 
if it were like a secret Doc Strange would like to keep that he has that watch for whatever reason socially that he has with it and so like yeah there has to be some weird contract that has got going with the entire city or even the world that this store if you walk in front of it is allowed to just take memories from you and play them to the public which I just don't think would ever happen no way I don't even know that they would how many people would be in favor of that like I could totally see like, nobody being in favor of it like most people wouldn't be in favor of it you get a couple people who are like, well, I think that everyone should be more honest, and that's a really great way to do it, or something like that, but... Mm -hmm. That's about it. Hi, Efap. Just seen your Batwoman playlist. It was very funny to watch. This podcast is amazing. Drinker, nerdrotic, great guests. Can't wait to watch the playback. Need to go for sleep now. Oh. Glad you're having fun with all of it. Yeah. Uh, if there's a place that contains everyone's memories, why didn't some multiversal mad lad take that information to warn all superheroes of future adversaries? Well, adversaries, sorry. Uh, basically, superhero becomes Edward Snowden and saves all of existence. I don't understand what you mean. It, it would only have the memories and only a couple, like a handful per person of that world's history. And even yeah, then, it would so. it would be a lot of irrelevant information, like, you know, two people hanging out and having a picnic or something. It's just like, all right. Um, maybe what we should be talking about is that's an amazing tool to put, like, a person of great power and threat into, as in, like, it's a great form of interrogation. You just keep putting them onto the platform until you get a memory you're looking for. Mm -hmm. it's, it's painless by the looks of things. And maybe you could save lives. I do not know. Uh, all strangers can travel the multiverse by making a portal to the OP book dimension. Mind controlling another strange to do the same, and bam, you've swapped universes. That's actually f uh, fair to bring up, yeah. Because if you get into your waypoint to that universal uh, gap junction, as they call it, and then you exit through a different one, you've you've crossed the multiverse, haven't you? Essentially, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Alright, they cracked multiversal travel, and they just don't really acknowledge it, just like they don't acknowledge a lot of things. Yeah. Can't believe they never talk about the Book of Vishanti again. Like, they're just, they're just done with it. They're never gonna talk about it again, it's over. It served its purpose, which was to be there as a plot device to get destroyed. Again on the lying aspect, heroes can't lie. Tony Stark even doxed himself in Iron Man 3. Heroes can't lie. Yeah, they can. I don't know, are they memeing, or...? Am I, am I missing the joke? Because that was a really dumb part of Iron Man 3. Made even dumber by the fact that he was not prepared for anyone to come to his fucking house. Uh, whilst I do not expect you to remember it, I feel really stupid about my previous super chat. I asked a question that was very poorly thought out. Anyway, looking forward to all future tisms. Uh... I mean, we haven't had any questions that are poorly thought out so far, right? I think. Unless they were ones we didn't understand. Like a different... Maybe it's from a different stream. Oh, maybe. Yeah, one that we don't understand. It's no biggie. Yeah, it's alright. Decided I'd see it Friday night in order to be in the know for this stream. Man, they were right. This movie can fart. I guess, do you mean, like, you're impressed by its ability to fart over and over again? Because that's what it was like to watch it. It's the equivalent. Maybe. I don't disagree. Um. Also, making the MCU 616 makes zero sense since the main line in comics is already 616. Why overlap like that? Uh, it's not that it doesn't make sense, it's more so that it's... Because, of course, this could just be a different continuity entirely. It gets weird to try and visualize it. But it's like a whole selection of universes is the movies, and then comics has its own mm. thing. Yeah, kind of. But at the same time... If you've got the animated one in there, it makes you start to think, like, is this some mm, kind of yeah. omniverse where it's just the comics would have been included as a, as a timeline? And yeah. it feels no, respectful I, I to be it. like, you'd, you'd be like, no, there's the so many universes there. out there we've discovered, um, you know, and, and then you're just casually mentioning some names and you throw in 616 and the comic fans will be like, yay. Yay, 616, as opposed to, oh, no, this is the... This is 616, the thing that isn't yeah. what you thought it was. Like, oh. 
Uh, speaking of the Halo show, how did you guys like the newest episode? It was certainly stunning and brave, wasn't it? I think that's, what was that, episode 8? It was been, wait, catastrophic? No, that would The been, latest one? It would have been. Ep no, wait, I think the latest one, if this was part one, that'd be episode 7, so the, that was the Klein episode. Um, you sure? I'm trying to remember, because yeah, this would have been sent, uh, what was it? Episode eight last week, so that would have been before part two. Uh, and if that one was in part one, then it'd be episode seven. Okay. Um, yeah, well, was, yeah, if you're talking I about the Quan episode, I was I was so checked out. I couldn't believe this is, like, they did that for a whole fucking episode. Well, there, there's a lot wrong with that episode. Um, something that I don't know what they're trying to do. But if they are doing what I think they're doing, then that just stacks even more coincidences on top that, like, apparently one of Kwan's ancestors dug a well just out in the desert and there was a portal in it. And, like, that probably leads to some Forerunner installation or a shield world or something. And then they, there's, like, a monitor that's apparently in a hallucination, even though it's relaying, inf like, that's information that Kwan wouldn't have. She's never seen a monitor. She doesn't know where the portal is in the well. She doesn't know what her ancestors look like, so it's magic. It has to be whenever the, the mystics in the desert gave her. And, like, again, the coincidence is, man, good thing that the one person who survived the attack, that the one other, like, person who can interact with Forerunner artifacts was there and, and bumped man, crazy. Mm. And, man, like, in that action scene, there's just so many things. It's like, man, lucky Soren showed up. If he, like, five minutes later, you'd be dead. Man, yeah. like, good thing... Like, he could see you when you were getting attacked. Man, good thing, like, you found... You hid under the truck that had Chief's AR. Otherwise, you would have been in trouble. Good thing that that wasn't, like, biometrically linked to Chief. Otherwise, it wouldn't have fired. Man, good thing Quan, like, using a weapon that she's never used before, like, lands a perfect shot on the weird oversight hydrogen thing that blows up After revealing place. herself for some reason? Where she yeah, could have been killed easily? Back, wow, I mean, there was like 50 people. The fact that they even, like, I know Soren's a Spartan, but like, man, 50 to 1. And they've got, like, rifles, and you've just got a revolver. He, he is a Spartan, but at the same time, he's not wearing the full armor set, is he? And he doesn't seem to have he, shields? Uh, yeah, but as we saw in episode 8, Chief, on his own, without armor, could fight two Spartans with armor. Um, yeah, but that's because he has plot armor. <laughs> Yeah, that is true. That is very plotty. And because they forgot to tie Kai up, like, they didn't kill her for some reason, because I guess, I don't know. Paul's I was gonna say, lost cause. the Quan episode is, like, really bad and annoying, but I actually, I still think the worst one is the latest one we watched. It's probably I think so, yeah. catastrophically like, bad. The whole episode is, like, episode one, um, but it's the whole episode. Because it's like everything, man. You have no cameras, like in the room with the Covenant spy. You're gonna let her interact with the artifact. Mm -hmm. um, you spent like one afternoon talking to her, man. Like you just just gonna. So you you your communications are down, and you're like, you know what? Let's go find Mackie instead of like just shutting this down immediately. Like this isn't happening. Like if I was Keys and I check my communications were down it's like we're not doing this test today like that's an uncanny coincidence even if it's nothing err on the side of caution yeah but, but they decide not to and, and then and then they're like you had what it cost if we were told um we're just like three higher ups in the unsc and it's like so i just want to let you guys know uh, we're trying to decide if we can trust this girl or not and you're like oh what girl it's like well she was dropped off by the covenant she speaks their language fluently and she's been with them since childhood can we trust her mm. you're like no the funny part talking is about that no <laughs> after what chief says to her is they trust me and i trust you it's like oh the unsc after all the things you've done why would they trust the you <laughs> yeah why would they trust you? like the show's forgotten that he tried to kill halsey yeah, like they didn't tell anybody about that though, right? Well, so how do they explain Chief just lying in that cannon? No idea. Uh, cannon. He's just lying no there. No idea. Like, oh, nobody mentioned it? Nobody I thought he almost did kill her too. Wow, well, like, with the, uh, yeah, when he was gonna turn her into goo. Uh, <laughs> and he radiation. totally did, but they pretend like he didn't. Like, that she wasn't exposed to radiation. Yeah, like, man, just... Ugh. Yeah. Awful. More on that Saturday. Saturday. It's gonna be so fun to um... watch Master Chief and in part be probably responsible for the Covenant finding Reach. It's gonna be really it's gonna be great. Yep. Um 
How dare you criticize this perfect movie? Oh, you're criticizing Doctor Strange. Carry on. Also, hi, Rags. Hi. Don't forget, America Chavez said she's only... She's the only Chavez in the multiverse. Doctor Strange asks how many times she's been... Oh, how many universes she's been to, and she says 72. Yeah, which isn't enough to rule it out, but she says... I think that's I don't she says dream. She dream. Yeah. Which is apparently enough. The whole dreaming theme, yeah. It's, According yeah. to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that's the rules. Dreams are multiverse. But I think they are right in that, statistically, if you were thinking about this probably you'd just be like, I'm sorry, love, that really doesn't rule it out. I know that you think it does, but it really doesn't. It doesn't. Though I guess you could say, like, <laughs> you could ask the Scarlet Witch, be like, does the Dark Old say there's any other Americas? And then she'd be like, no. And you'd be like, do you think that's weird? And she's like, yeah, but... Alright then, let's continue fighting. <laughs> And then America Chavez punches reality. I think that's a, that's a Metal's Forge meme, from what I gather. Don't forget to check out Metal's Forge on Batman Under the Red Hood, or else Superboy Prime will punch reality in the face. Oh well. Deadifying. Is there a difference between timelines and universes? And if so, Chavez shouldn't be able to return to our, our Doctor Strange to our universe, except she has time travel abilities. As far as I'm concerned, there's no difference between timelines and universes. They're one and the same. If you dig into all of these definitions, you'll find contradictions everywhere. Mm -hmm. In terms of how they're separated out, quote-unquote. But a lot of people want them to be because, fuck me, nothing makes any sense right now. But it, it can't it's make any sense. Problem. Yeah. I personally enjoy the fact that they had the balls to just make Wanda the out-and-out -out villain from the beginning to end instead of pulling a stupid vi twist villain thing. Um, I mean, it still is a twist villain. They treat it in the film as though we, did, we couldn't... Yeah, like, it's like, oh, shit, she's actually the bad... Because if you remember, WandaVision does not end with saying Wanda will be the bad guy in the next thing she's in. It ends no, with her doesn't. using the book, which Doctor Strange does in this film, and he's not evil. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'd still say she's kind of the twist villain, because they're like, it's the spooky monsters being led by a demon. You're like, uh-huh. And then it's like, no, it's yeah. Wanda. Um, I've seen a lot of people praise the movie for the fact that it treats her as though she's the bad guy throughout, and is that not the best indication that we have lost all standards? Yeah, like, well, look, at least the film knows she's the bad guy. So. At least the mass murderer is treated as though she's immoral. <laughs> Hooray! Like, man, Our we're doing great. So high. It's almost to the point where I'm like, I don't think, I don't think so. I don't think it gets a point for that. I don't think Yeah, so. that's not a good... Like, the humans uh, are actually bound to the ground in some way, in the form of, uh, like, because of the result of gravity. They've managed to portray that pretty effectively. And you're like, yeah, I guess so. Good job. Yeah. Um, they tripped on their faces at the end by redeeming her at the end, though. They should have just com... Uh, com I think they meant committed. They said commuted 100%. Um, it's, uh... I don't know what they've they've concluded about Wanda as a person in this movie, really. I I, I guess you could say like... the the worst interpretation, or rather the worst result of what we saw that I think they may be going for is, yes, she's done evil things, but you can understand why, right? And I'd be like, no. Nah, not really. Uh, Hydra dabbled in all methods of power. Wouldn't Hydra know about the Darkhold? Cap 1 and the Norse wall hail Hydra Wanda, not one Hydra even found? I don't no, know. No, because it didn't exist before didn't exist. this so, movie. That's the but first also, problem, the Darkhold didn't exist. See, I guess the Darkhold is like a weird magic thing or sorcery thing, and only magic sorcery people could find it or whatever. I think it's like well, its own little it's magic space. It's been with space. Agatha for like decades, isn't it? Hundreds of years, yeah. Well, may maybe it's... I don't know. I assume that what they're trying to do is maybe... No, they're not even trying to do anything. And it, it implies some sort of a plan. Or machination. And they just don't have those. Everything is just sort of tacked on. It's like a reverse Jenga tower. Uh -huh. Where you're just trying to put more and more and more and more pieces on it really badly. And then it it's collapsed, and so you're just throwing, put th putting things on the pile. So it's just a pile. It's not even a tower anymore. <laughs> it's rubble. It's, it's just rubble. Can you make sense of this rubble? It's like, well, I think it used to be a tower. <laughs> Maybe. 
Uh, Goodell has better writing than Doctor Strange 2. True. Yeah. More cohesive. It has like a script and thought and care put into it. Uh, why is she even called Captain Carter? It's not like Steve is called Captain Rogers. I think some people do call him Captain Rogers in the um, yeah, in the films, cool. right? Captain Rogers sometimes. I assume yeah. that's his rank. I think so, because well, it was like honorary for um, promotional stuff, and then it, he did he actually earn the rank of captain? I can't actually remember. I don't know, but people definitely have called him Captain Rogers. Yeah, and and it's because they don't want to call it Captain Britain. It's really fucking awkward. They Captain don't. They can't really call it Captain America. Captain that just doesn't work. Captain um, Britain. Captain Carter, I think, sounds. All right, I'm fine with it. Yeah, and, I don't uh, have any problem with Captain Carter. The alliteration helps. Hmm. Uh, why are the memories from the memory store shown in third person? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> this is one of the questions we asked, I think. We were like, well, hmm. It's funny. Um, Halo does the same thing. On the wide shot, it shows, like, people moving behind him and stuff. And then when it's close up to him, it shows the background. It's, like, all blurry as though a memory you can't quite remember. And it's like, why can he not quite remember what he didn't even see? Why have you made it this way? Like, you think you've done a clever by being like, what's clear is what he could see, but what's uh, what's blurry is what he couldn't see at all. It's like, that doesn't make sense. It shouldn't just, it should not be there. It should just be, like, nothing. Or it should be the room clear because that's what he believed it to be. It's, I guess you could come up with, try and come up with some justification, but yeah, these memories, if anything, should be POV. Um, but even then, we start to wonder, like, how is it Man, what are the odds of getting hit by a red shell and lightning strike at the same time and so you nullify the lightning strike? I think it's happened a couple know. times as well. So great for me, because that means I get to be real fast and I'm already first. Gotta go fast. Oh, yes. This is Black Bolt. He's got our back. I would advise not standing in front of him. His voice erases even the souls of his victims. Yeah. Reed Richards, smartest man in the universe. Yep. It uh, kind of has that ring of, remember, Cop Morty and uh, Tales of the Citadel? <laughs> Smartest man in the universe. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, I loved Unthinkable. Great uh, Samuel Jackson performance. I remember liking him a lot in it, but to be fair, I don't think I've ever watched something with him in it and thought, man, Samuel Jackson was lacking. Maybe the prequels? Maybe. Which is uh, going to come across as really harsh to a lot of people, but like, first and second episodes didn't get much Sam Jackson fun times. And I really hate the reaction when Anakin says he, he thinks the fucking Chancellor of like, the whole Clone War is the evil Sith Lord. And he's like, a Sith a Lord? Sith Lord? It's like, bro, this is catastrophic what you just found out. Well, um, okay, I'm fine with him saying like, a Sith Lord. But I'm not okay with him slowly, casually walking after he learns that. I would probably have written you... it that he wouldn't even want to necessarily say anything yet. He'd probably be like, you can't fucking be serious. <laughs> like, this is going to be, this is so out of the scope of, like, potential that he is the big bad guy and he has been this whole time. Because part of the thing... Was the... that, is, was that the point of that line and it's just a result of the prequel's bizarre, like, dialogue? I just didn't get the sense from him that he was blown away. I got the sense that you had said to me, I'm going to be available at fucking 8 p.m. And then I go, 8 p.m.? All right. Just felt uh, so casual. 8, 8 p.m.? <laughs> if, I, if I casually walk, I can get there by then. That's what I'm saying, like... Uh... And, yeah, yeah, you know, just... But Samuel Jackson's great. Unthinkable, I don't know if it's good. I, I can't remember. I just remember being intrigued by what it was deciding to cover. The whole film is basically... There's a main character in it who is an audience insert for sure. It's basically just, how do you feel? What do you think the extent should be gone to in order to save, like, an entire school of children? How far should you go? And that's fun for, for, for a thought process. Uh, but it's a bit, it's a bit dark. Most stuff happens in the movie. You brought him here to kill me! Yeah. We're gonna be seeing him <laughs> again. Yeah. Apparently, um, 
he's he's said in like an interview that he's so happy to be so accepted by the Star Wars fandom. It wasn't like that the first time around. I'm like, aww. That's I'm happy for him. Absolutely. I, I don't really want these actors to like suffer it anyway. Yeah. Go for it, have fun. I hope it's a fun experience. I just um Yeah. Man do I worry time. about seeing him in, in Kenobi. I can't believe we're about to. That feels so fucking strange. It's our course, yeah. So it's, it's almost because they like I said, I'm pretty sure they're doing flashback scenes. It's like you're about to get more prequel content. It's like God. <laughs> Not necessarily in the same vein, but just the era, you know. Mm-hmm. Weird. Um, if you hate Halo show, imagine a Warhammer 40k kids show. <laughs> I mean, is there is there Warhammer 40k shows? Anyone made them? I don't know. You'd think uh, that, I have no maybe. clue. I don't know. Let me check. Um, hmm. It looks like there will be Angels of Death. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, a TV series from 2021 to onwards, or what is it? it says it has episodes from 2021. Hmm. Is this like a fan-made thing? Yeah, people are saying there's a lot of fan stuff that's been made. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything official. I just don't know. I, I just don't know. Uh, it's weird they reference the Illuminati since I remember everyone hating them back in the day. They caused World War Hulk after all the pricks. Yeah, apparently they, they're not liked in the um, comic continuity, but I, I couldn't tell from what I'd read whether or not it was deliberate, like, on the part of the storytelling, that the Illuminati are a bad group, or if people just didn't like the concept. I couldn't tell. Right. Um... You guys played the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe? Uh, not yet. Me and Rags have played the original game, we haven't played the Ultra Deluxe one yet, but I look forward to doing so. I have not played the... Stanley Parable. Just saw the Firestarter remake. It was top to bottom terrible. Best the worst level laughs by the end. Please keep it in mind for EFAP movies. Firestarter? Firestarter. I'm not familiar with that. Let me take a look. I am also not familiar. Firestarter 2022. Um. A couple? Desperately trying to hide their daughter, Charlie. Don't name your daughter Charlie. From a shadowy federal agency that wants to harness her unprecedented gift for turning fire into a weapon of mass destruction. Hmm. It seems to be. Let me look at the ratings 12 from critics, 47% from audiences. All right. Um, you guys keep saying not making sense is bad. Explain Monty Python and the Holy Grail or the ASDF movies. So, uh, last time I checked, those weren't like reliant on stakes to create dramatic payoffs. They were incredibly funny. I don't know that like because really Multiverse of Madness can be considered pretty funny, but I don't think that's what they were going for. It becomes yeah. difficult to figure out how you would apply consistency to comedy, especially since you can have comedy that's gone for drama, you can have comedy that's like flat out oh, absurdism. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously good. It's it just uh, a matter of how you value that end result. If the if your goal is to just have a good time and laugh at the movie, then you could say, yeah, continuity wise, this is absolutely fucked. It makes no sense whatsoever. But it's really, really funny, so I enjoyed it immensely. Yeah, I'm happy and to I'm concede that. Holy, all the Monty Python movies as stories are bullshit, but I'm pretty sure that it was made well, without awareness. I'm, I, I'm not, I'm, in no world am I going to be devaluing the work that was done to achieve those comedic payoffs. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I love Monty Python movies. They're hilarious. They're That's some of my favorite classes. comedies. One of the things I often think about with like something like Looney Tunes where the world is absurd is that the characters are pretty clearly defined. They have very clear wants and those don't really change. So like no matter how the world reacts, Daffy is always going to be vain and arrogant. Uh, yeah, like vain and selfish and greedy. Um, you know, like it's I can always rely on him to act in a way that I understand, which is the important part in terms of uh, grounding the comedy. For as absurd as the scenarios may get in Looney Tunes, the characters are really understandable. Um, yeah. I think a lot more work goes into the joke and sort of sketch writing and stuff like Monty Python, but the story of how they can connect all of these things to be able to just deliver all of the jokes within a one and a half hour, two hour time slot, I don't think they care that much. Um, Which is fine. Yeah, um, it is fine. Something like Hot Fuzz really cares, though. It'll be like... We've got to make it's everything white line up. And white Hot Fuzz is an incredibly impressive comedy and story. Yeah. And then Multiverse of Madness is an incredibly unimpressive story. And as a comedy... Well, it's only value with <laughs> intentional. You might get some laughs out of it. Not for the jokes they thought they were making, though. Um, Wanda Magic push him instead of killing him. Lucky. She does that a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could tell who's got plot armor and who doesn't. It's a very common choice for writers to make. Like, I will put... It's it's right up there with um, whenever a monster or a bad guy or whatever has grabbed somebody and they're like holding them by the throat or they have a sword or a knife or claws or big sharp fangs or teeth and they've got them dead to rights, and then they just throw them away so that they can then walk towards them slowly when their goal is to kill them, and you're like, why? That happens it's all the time. It's kind of funny. This happened... There's a, there's a movie we watched recently where the um, person she's fighting is like a WWE fighter, or at least that's the style that they have absorbed and are using to fight her. And so, um, her being thrown in different places several times felt a lot more at home in the fight scene than, um, would with, like, a Terminator or one of the dark bot, edgy bot things from Mandalorian or whatever else, where their goal is to get close enough to you that they can crush your fucking throat, and then they just keep throwing you around, doesn't make any sense. But a wrestler, I can see doing all kinds of moves that would, uh, include tossing you into things, you know? Um, so there's going to be ways to make it work is kind of what point I'm trying to make here, but um, most of the time we see it utilized when they just don't want the protagonist to die. Dark Wookiee in Book of Boba Fett? Yeah, that's another one. That was really dumb, too. Uh, I remember all of that so vividly. They made Captain Marvel the Sorcerer Supreme in the comics. <laughs> What? Does she, does, she, magic? does she need any more powers? How the hell did she become Sorcerer Supreme? Does she even like... Does she know magic? I don't does she know care about she sorcery? Magic. I didn't know that. Dubstep droids, yeah. The problems I see with the concept of an infinite multiverse is that not only does it eliminate most stakes in the story, but the concept of infinity itself is a problem. Say you want to go to a random universe in the multiverse, there is an infinite number of chances that the air in that universe is breathable and the infinite number of chances the air is not breathable. True. Yeah, and lots of difficulties. Um, it's hard to conceptualize sometimes just what you're dealing with in terms of let's go to a random universe. It's like, uh... A lot of variables to account for. Why does Wanda the need... fact that time seems to be synchronized is probably the biggest hurdle that you might have already out of the way. Well, uh, we talk about that. with infinite possibilities, that's just, even that doesn't really make it safer for you, does it? Why does Wanda need an interdimensional doctor when she can change reality so her kids aren't sick? I don't know. I don't know why her witch powers aren't good enough to save them from... Like space cancer or whatever, whatever they end up getting. This is 
these are the kinds of powers it's useful to establish rules in. Um, like, when I change something, I need to know what it is I'm changing it to. I need to be familiar with it. I need to... I need to be... Uh, you know how in Full Metal Alchemist there was a huge emphasis on knowing science so that you could perform alchemy accurately? You know? Uh -huh. I need to know, like, physical compounds. I need to know weights and measurements and masses and stuff so when I turn a thing into another thing, I'm actually doing it because I know about it. You know, knowledge helps me to perform it better. Or this show seems to be in stark opposition to the concept of knowledge and learning. It's just... Um, I'm just going to do it because magic, instead of some kind of a grounding force or guideline that implies a level of training or necessary knowledge prerequisite. Um, so there's no, it's just, things just sort of happen because they need to happen for the plot, generally, which is just the worst way for things to happen. Wanda's whole arc in the movies is she's all-powerful, but simultaneously manipulated by outside forces. Hydra, Ultron, Agnes, Darkhold. Wanda pitches reality-altering tantrums, but it's always because of outside influence. Um, I don't think- I don't think we want to remove that much, uh... sort of agency away from her. She made her choice with Ultron. She wasn't manipulated. It frustrates me that she's like, wait, you want to destroy the whole world? You don't just want to kill loads of people, including the greatest heroes on Earth? Damn, now I think you're immoral. It's like, fuck you. <laughs> to be fair, I'm glad she became a good guy. It's just that she never really got punished for what she did, which... You know, what she did... Quite bad. Quite bad. Yeah. And yeah, if someone said, yeah, but Ultron was manipulating her, it's like, she knew what she did with Hulk. She knew. Yeah, convincing anybody into any position is manipulation. Not it's not like the Darkhold, even though that is fucking crap as well. Magical. And Hydra, something. she volunteered, being like, you know, she's manipulated. It's like, eh. Can't remove her choice from that entirely. But I, I you know, if we wanted to make that a consistent element, we need to change a lot about how she's been portrayed so far. I feel like Civil War was really helping out with what w was going to be her future, and then she and just I went off the that. rails. Yeah. And it's kind of insane that a lot of people think this is the best she's ever been. Yeah. It really sucks. I'm going to get a drink real quick. I'll be right back. Will they? Uh, will you react to the Multiverse of Madness plot holes explained video by Screen Crush? Nah, I don't think I want to. He's probably gonna do the whole like Kang did it all, or you'll you'll do some something like that. I don't think it's gonna be interesting. Mola, you yeah. need to play Halo. Which one? All of them? Maybe the first one. Uh, you should play Halo one and two since you haven't played those. I mean, I, I'm uh, on board playing Halo three again. Yeah. And then, and then, I, I imagine if I streamed a lot of them in solo, people would enjoy that. Especially if I got to four and five and I became very invested in the story, you know. Yeah, just to watch it all collapse. <laughs> yeah, like Mass Effect. Something else I can do. Uh, congrats! Join the team: the Don, Agatha, John Walker, Defender Strange, Pizza Popper, and now Superior Strange. Yeah. Right in there. Uh, howdy boys, I'm sure someone already mentioned this, but the memory spell Strange used in No Way Home was called the Runes of Kof Kal. I guess that makes him a witch now. <laughs> no. Because runes... Uh, shut up. Just because Wong said runes means witchcraft. What a stupid fucking line. Yeah. Well, how else will our characters know to think that this is witchcraft? Like, oh. Could easily have had it so that, um... Wanda just tries to come and get it personally, and then... That's how we find out. You don't need to do it that way, but it's fine. We get the cool reveal where she shows that she lives in Kaled. Um... Day four of reciting Maxwell's Bloodborne video to get you to watch it. Apologies for any confusion with the format. I always follow this chat with three more, each of which are a line from the video. Read in order, also high rags. Uh, gone for a moment. Yep. 
In fact, I can assume that a lot of people watching this video will basically never play the game. I don't know if that's about Bloodborne or something else. But alright. Uh, hmm. But keep watching because I'm hilarious and original. Oh, I assume that is the Bloodborne video. Yeah. Do that, and I can give you the full, unfiltered, uncensored, unsubstantiated, and unsportsmanlike experience that is Bloodborne. Q intro. Alright. Multiverse stories are just uninspired, like, I just found out that there's an Albanian version of me, had to put him down. Reject MCU, rejoin Bionicle. Hey, look, alright, there are, there are, there are, there are good multiverse stories. There's, hypothetically, there was one that released around about the same time as Doctor Strange. Yes. It meaningfully explores the concept of multiverse by comparing one's life to their other potential yes. lives. And you know, thinking about what that means to understand that, you know, nihilism, but also uh, 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 existentialism, or the, the one the one where you, you choose to do whatever you value because that's all that matters. There, there's definitely, I know, you know, there's other stories that do that too, not just this hypothetical movie that came out recently. Also, hi, Rex. Hi. Mm. Characters are only as smart as their writers. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a funny little thing, isn't it? <laughs> it's just to think about. Yeah. Like, yeah your characters smart, clever, funny. These are... Funny. You can't just yeah. write them to be that way. You have to actually put in the work. Funny is the interesting one. Funny is, it's like, yeah, they are only as funny as you are, really. Yeah, when a, when a character Never says, right here, if spider webs come out of his butt, he he, it's like, oh man, that's the kind of joke you think's funny, huh? <laughs> like, okay. Well, that was the best you could come up with. Yeah, it's, it's like a self-report. <laughs> You're like, this is comedy. You're like, is it? Oh. Whenever I hear a, a character in a piece of media described as funny, I think Gotham High is the is yeah. a great example of that how jack was described as being really really funny is hilarious and so i was so tuned in i was like all right let's see how funny he really is writers well, and this like, it was not just funny cringe. he was just, just a cringe loser if you have to declare a character's traits you kind of already screwed up a bit you know <laughs> like it's uh it's not really something that you need to Think about Hot Fuzz. How do they? How do they essentially establish that Nicholas Angel is like an incredibly competent um, police officer? It's like through a really rapid, clever montage that shows just how competent he is at so many things. But it shows how competent he was, but not just telling. Well, and it's achieving so, the fact that that's how he sees himself proudly, and then he's great. being demoted and yeah. put in a village. It's like a great juxtaposition. Good. Yeah, juxt yeah, exactly. Um, if you have to tell. It's, it's kind of like, you know how, like, in romance movies, they're like, you're smart, you're funny, it's like, why do you have to say that? Like, you know, like, surely that should be, like, transparent, that should just be obvious. It should come through really well. If you're trying to, if you say that in a piece of, of media, it needs to be, um, it, it's like, it's kind of, it kind of goes in parallel with when a character explicitly states the theme of the story yeah. to another character. It needs to be housed within a context where it makes sense for one character to be telling that so explicitly exactly. to another character, right? Usually a really focal point of the story, like a really important moment, is when you can have your character essentially declare how they feel or declare the point. Um, but not and the more the obvious that, that theme is, that message is, then it relies on the recipient of that message being unable to have learned it themselves so there's a cost to having to say it so blatantly for the most part. Um, more, I want to ask in the nicest way possible. Any update on the Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 6? I love your breakdowns of them. And as a postal office worker, I need more content. Long man. Good. Also, hi, Rags. Hello. No word on such a project's existence. Uh, but other projects be on their way. Or long in the pipeline. No one has said the phrase Game of Thrones in a long, long time. And for good reason. It is forbidden knowledge. 
This movie should have been called Steven Multiverse. Steven Multiverse. Hmm. That's a... That's a good joke. Yeah. I appreciate that joke. It's not, like, funny, but I appreciate that joke. I miss the times when people called us misogynist because we didn't like the sequel trilogy. Greetings, Rags. Hi. Well, we got called insults today, so that's, that's I think they still... Neighborhood. Still call us misogynist, don't worry. Still out there. Yeah, whenever we, whenever we cover something that has anything to do in a remote but way with the, the, the female sex, then we will, of course, be called incels or misogynists or women haters. Sad, lonely, pathetic basement dwellers. You don't take your pick. It's all, uh... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Par for the course. Um, honestly, guys, just watch everything everywhere all at once. It's a much better multiverse movie. Ah. Indeed it is. And I would highly, highly, highly recommend everybody watches that movie because it is phenomenally good. I feel like you missed the running <laughs> gag we've been doing what? for this whole episode. Oh, is it? It was a running yeah, gag? Yeah, you're talking about hypothetical, really great multiverse films, and then you just kind of declared... <laughs> it's, still <hypothet> it's still hypothetical, <laughs> right? It's, it's too late. It's, the, the veil has been lifted. The That's right, the veil is... Think, but, Fringy, think of all the infinite multiverses where I went along with the gag. Yeah, I was, I know. Yeah, wow, I know. think all those. That's I would have required you to have picked it up, though. I don't know if there's any multiverse where you do that. An infinite amount of multiverses where I picked it up. Hmm. Like I think it's a constant. You're a Nexus person that you always didn't I'm a Nexus. pick it up. I'm an Avengers level threat. <laughs> Uh, most lucky Med Medaka Medica Medaka always rolls all sixes with the dice stacked on top of each other in straight perfect guess. First try randomized nine digit code. I have no idea what I'm meant to do with that. Medaka? Who's that? Do not know. Uh, her special ability is literally being the protagonist. What about Wanda? I'm not sure. Uh, shouldn't What If Ultron have caused millions of incursions through his invasion? I didn't watch the show. Well, except two episodes. But yeah, as far as I know, he like fights the Watcher at the end of it or something. It gets crazy. Is What If canon? I don't know. In the multiverse, I'm sure. I don't know. Because oh, if it is, it probably does cause problems. Mm. But what doesn't at this point? Um, Can you make something that just doesn't cause problems? Just have a story of one man in a house with a milkshake. You can't fuck that up, right? Please, Marvel. Just see if you can pull it off. So they say the MCU is 616, but all historical events are completely different. It's almost like a completely different universe. Maybe I'm missing some context, but this is beyond silly. Um, I suppose those would be universes where the deviation from ours was a lot sooner, so we're closer to the baseline universe in certain circumstances. I don't know why they wouldn't call the universe Universe 1, though. I'm still lost on that. I don't understand as well. I assume every universe would call themselves Universe 1, and yeah. then they would make contact with all the other universes, and then all the universes would be like, well, we can't call ourselves all one. Is like, but can we refer to ourselves as one? It's like, yeah, but not, but only amongst yourselves, not when you're talking to other people. So they 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 come up with some way to do something about it. I'm sure they they would they would figure it out. They're smart people. Mm. They would definitely come up with a system. That's a theory. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a theory. Uh, here's five bucks for Rag's amazing vacuum joke. It made my afternoon. Oh, thanks very much. You I'm go. glad you liked it. There are rumors that Wanda didn't kill Professor X and he's coming back. What? what? He seems really dead, but that's okay. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if... that he's coming back. It just wouldn't be that Professor X, presumably. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> Patrick Stewart is... Uh, Worn himself out to everything at this point. Kind of. God Season 3, everybody. Tune in. Oh, you red hair. Mr. Wolf. Just activate the star beam. Captain, 
Do you need to lay down again? <laughs> Fuck you. What? <laughs> what? You can't hear. What? If so, this is so stupid. How do you survive your neck being snapped? I don't fucking want to think about it. <laughs> like, they just go, he's back and he's like, I wish to get revenge on Wanda for what she did to my neck. And just like, oh, go away. He snapped, he snapped the neck of Star Trek. This is cosmic justice. Sorry if I missed it, but who did the Avatar... Who did the Avatar art? Pretty damn cool. Uh, that was... Let me scroll down here. Live art? Or live... The live at something? Uh, it's on the actual image. Are you, you talking about Jeremy R. Moreno? Well, the, the, that's... I think that's the, the name, and then they have, like, a handle in the bottom oh, left. Oh, the live art chain. T H E yeah. underscore L Y V A R T underscore C H A I N. Yeah. And it's very good. I really liked it. It's really excellent. They even I like did uh, one quick I like drink the thematic e fat. Yes, they did. That's they real did. neat. I enjoy some thematic profile icons for our fappery. Yeah. Someone drew those for the incels, so we appreciate that. Everyone's got friends. Mm hmm. Uh, here's five bucks. Oh wait, sorry. Uh, sorry if I'm. Imagine if Kevin Feige had the balls to put Steamboat in this movie as a cameo. Nice. Dude, he'd fucking lose his job. <laughs> <laughs> See, people would notice Steamboat and be like, "This is horrendous. We can't do this." But they don't know his rape. Like, okay. I feel like you guys. You guys need to work on that. All right. I want to know if Warner Brothers had a call with Patty about that. They were like, you put rape in the movie? And she was like, no. It's a commentary on Big, no. the movie with Tom Hanks. <laughs> Please read this tweet. Someone explained it perfectly on Twitter. And if you don't get it, you're, you're just, you're out of the loop. All right, that's it. It's an inside joke. The Black rape Bolt. It's an inside joke. Black Bolt killing himself is worse than the stomach acid dude in the boys. Um, I'm not sure I agree. It might be just as bad. It'll be more disrespectful because he's Black Bolt as opposed to random guy with stomach acid person. Acid powers. The, the problem with stomach acid killing man is that it burns his whole face off and it's like, wait, but isn't that your literal ability? You've been doing this the whole time and it's never it touched your lips? What? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, None I of that made any fucking uh, sense. Please don't remind me of how poor the Boys Season 2 hospital episode was. Do you guys remember that? I do, yeah. The one where they kill a guy. We got a fucking another season coming happen. soon. Not fair. You understand? We have so many things to do. We, we were happy. We were just, you know, sitting here talking about, talking about this, that, and the other. Every little thing. Now look at us. Don't stop misery. Uh, Black Bolt can tell you where to find your kids. Cut to credits. I've seen that joke, yeah. Um, God, there were so many things Reed could have done. Um, she doesn't know who Black Bolt is or what he does, so she just has to... He, uh, Reed just has to say, like, you know... He is, um... You could even Someone's make lightning. up what? No, you don't even have to make up that he has a power to kill her. You could be like, "Look, we understand. We know exactly what your situation is, and obviously we can't stop you. We don't intend to. We want to help you." Black Bolt here is one of the most powerful creatures on the planet. He can get you what you need. Um, and then she can be like, "What are you? What are you talking about?" And then he can be. And Black Bolt can't speak until he gets close enough to her. But he just has to take a few steps forward, and then Reed can continue to say, "Like, the." Black Bolt has a special ability in which he can, and then just, he's like, shout at her! He goes, cunt! And then he goes, Pew! It's all over. But that's if you give your way, your position away, which they didn't have to do, but they did anyway. It's, uh... Yeah, I don't know, man. Reed's just not street smart, okay? Didn't her powers come from the Mind Stone? Why they act like the Reality Stone, though? 
He's the Scarlet Witch. She was always a witch. The stone only made her more powerful. It didn't give her powers according to the new canon. I don't even know anymore. They definitely um, wanted to have it so that she was essentially created as a result of the stones, because everything in the world kind of revolved around the Infinity Stones, and then they were done with that storyline, so now they're like, what, what else can we do? And it's like, well, fuck it, she's a witch. Can we rewrite most of history to be that? And it's like, kind of. Yes, we can, but... <laughs> Casting a probability hex. Fuck that line so much. It was a really neat history that they were, like, haunted forever by this bomb that had Stark's, uh, you know, icon and labeling on it. Staring at it and, and waiting for it to kill them, but it never did because it was a dud. Which happens. You didn't need to make that a hex. Uh... But won't... Okay, so this is difficult English. But won't doesn't kill himself, since going on living is braver than dying. Crisis and infinitism. Yep. Captain Marvel's a smug female dog in every universe, I guess. You eliminated my teammates, now I'm mad. Yeah. It's, she was pretty horrendous in that, but so were a lot of them, really. Ooh, mushrooms. All I have to do is cast this spell is to, is to wave my arms. What arms? Is this seen how the reality stone works? I don't know. I don't know what her limits are in terms of changing people's biology. I don't know if she can, like, just squish your head at will. I don't know. They just don't make it clear, you know? Uh, the worst in Transformers comics is getting alternative versions of yourself to gang up and kill the villain in Transformers Regeneration 1, so they did multiverse better than the MCU as well. Doesn't surprise me. Uh, Scarlet Witch has been stupidly powerful for more or less a soup and more or less a supervillain for years now, so her character and power didn't throw me off too much, but yeah, comics does not equal MCU, so that's no excuse. Oh yeah, she's exploded in power levels in the MCU recently. Except when she's fighting undead spirit things. They can, uh, they can get her for a little bit. Don't know why. They just, they just sort of do. Uh, Captain Marvel was killed by lazy writing. I know, it's crazy. The Illuminati were ridiculous, but dear god, Black Bolt's death was surprisingly gruesome. Very Raimi. I guess. Uh, is it very rainy? I, yeah? I, I guess, I don't know. Still stupid given that he was always careful not to make sounds, but still. I feel like that kind of takes away any praise you can have for it. Um, especially put together with the fact that she only knew to do it because of Reed. Bad, bad, bad. I am all the Captain Marvels, and I am all the statues. Yep. Statues will get you, man. You gotta watch out. I'm all the jibs. Uh, Reed killed Black Bolt, not Wanda. Kinda. Kinda. When Professor X dies, he should say, uh, should have been fast pass instead, lol. What's, what's, what is fast pass? Fast pay. Is that like a bus thing or a subway ticket? Like a card? Oh, you have the fast pass? Maybe that's what it's referencing because he's in a wheelie chair. I'm not sure. Um, anyone and everyone. How and why was Strange able to remember Spider Man? Because he doesn't remember Peter Parker. He remembers Spider Man. That's what they want us to believe the, how the spell works. When you dig really far into it, it doesn't work. But that's what you're supposed to think that it worked as. They all remember Spooderman and, and all of his hero antics, they just don't know who he is, or who Peter Parker is. Uh, Mordo just drops Strange into the acceleration disk of a supermassive black hole, gas and dust moving so fast and so hot it can be seen across the universe. 
I don't. I wouldn't recommend opening a portal to a fucking black hole um, to yeah, kill somebody. Uh, <laughs> I think yeah, that you might I'll regret that. One. But uh, yeah, there are way smarter ways to kill him than what Moto did. Oh, Disney Park Fast Pass allows you to go past everybody. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. That makes sense. Um. According to Midnight's Edge, Victoria Alonso oversaw the reshoots. Explains why Professor X wasn't introduced as a leader of the X-Men and how stupid everything is. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not sure who Victoria Alonso is. I agree with Mola. I'm tired of watching Professor Patrick Stewart die over and over and over again. Logan did it great, the rest is just sad. Stop it. Yeah, he died in Picard as well. Season 1, right? But he came back he, as a flash like robot. A cyborg creature, creature or something. <laughs> Did that get referenced at all in season two? I don't know. Does anyone I don't give like a shit? <laughs> Your flight has been cancelled as a reference to the Grateful Dead. Okay. Hmm. If Aussie real, then why it's not referenced in ED93? What was that? Uh, is this even Australia for Aussie? Mm hmm. <laughs> it's, it's real. I'm, geez. Australia is real. I'm convinced. Yeah. Ancient One. Strange was meant to be the best of us. Illuminati. He's too dangerous to be left alive. Tyrion Baggins. I decided I don't like MCU movies. Yeah, it gets weird, huh? Meant to be the best of us, yet Strange is always the one that fucks everything up in every universe because he just has to hold the knife. I mean, it was this film's idea, it wasn't anyone else's. And so fuck the rest of the movies. Oh, all the Raya's right, it sucks. Um, please take your ticket. Alright. Imagine someone borrowed the book. Dude, it would be... There's no way it's on that pedestal. It probably would have been destroyed by now. There's no way. The Book of Vishanti is going to be in use by somebody at all times. There will be a huge queue. There's going to be a Doctor Strange sitting there right now being like, oh, I hope they come back with that thing. Anytime well, now. My universe is at stake. Yeah, all of our universes are at stake. That's why we had to form a queue. There would be cameras there. There would, there would be all kinds of security measures to try to... They wouldn't even keep it there anymore. They would be like, this place doesn't seem very safe for this book, gonna be honest with you guys. It seems like it's crumbly and, and stuff, I don't know. It's concerning that Chavez's first attempt at escaping the reinforced glass before she's aware of her super strength is to punch it with her bare hand. Yeah, yeah she would, exactly. would break her hand. <laughs> interesting idea. Well, when you figure out that something can withstand a fire extinguisher being, you know, shoved into it, that's when you try your fist, right? She should have used her thick-ass head. It was smashed right through. Halo show pissed me off more than anticipated. Well, do it in yeah. Saturday. Will make you even more upset. Yay! Hmm. Uh, holy moly, this is really great example of Marvel Sludge, made for normies that lacks any ability to recognize cognitive dissonance. Here's what would have been spent on movie ticket. Shout out to all my fellow lurkers. Oh, thank you very much. Hmm. Yeah. Hope those who be lurking today are having a nice time. If the Darkhold is a copy, surely the good book is too? Nope. No, no, the good book one. is just, there's just the one. Isn't that funny? Like, the Dark Hole gets destroyed, and the first thought Wanda has is like, so where's the other one? The book, the good book gets destroyed, everyone's just like, oh well. <laughs> like, oh. I guess there was no word on where that came from. Uh, It feels like a lot of writers just use the multiverse as an excuse to be lazy. They just use it as an excuse to get specific payoffs they haven't bothered to put in effort to earn. Yes. Uh, it's been said by a couple of the guests we have, and by us as well, but it just seems like when you engage with the multiverse, it's because you're running out of, uh, 
ways to generate your stories that don't fuck everything up anyway. So you're just like, we want more. We want bigger. And this is the easiest way to do it. And it really is. It's working. The only good part of the movie is when Batwoman showed up and said, I'm a woman, and then womaned all over the place. I, I quite like that part, to be fair, yeah. I think what was cool about it is how much it just it made sense. Hmm. Red shell when I'm sixth? Thanks. Game's mean. Um, what's more likely? Same events or personalities? Sorry, say that one more time. What are personalities? What or personalities? I'm assuming they're saying when you travel to a different universe, what do you think would be more likely to be there? Uh, the same events as your universe or the same personalities within people? Probably the same... Like, events? Is there a way to even say which of those is more likely? I don't know. Probably not. Because, like, they're Auto both kind of shaped by everything connected. else, so... Yeah. yeah, the events are determined by people's actions and people's personalities are determined by what happens to them, to some extent. Well, to l and a large extent. Right? Yeah. I'm first place Vince. and I'm holding a lightning. How cool is that? Oh, yeah, you want to save that. Um, Meme's eyes and Fringy's nose. Oh, my. Oh. I missed something about the the drawn image. Was there something about Meme's eyes and Fringy's nose? I don't know. I think it was because I had a big set of grinning. I had a big grin. Hmm. So, all you have. Uh, remember Iron Man One? Remember how simple the stakes were? Now we have a dimension shifting wizard remote controlling a zombie to fight a witch by using the souls of the damned as wings. What the fuck, man? We've yeah. had multiple things where it's just like multiverses and all time and space and just incomprehensible. Everything has to be a, a, the fate of a universe or something. It's like, stop. I just don't believe you anymore. I don't connect with that. I can't even understand that. But it's the multiverse of madness. Wow. Um... There is one universe where Strange is gay for Chris Chan. Well, they'll be infinite. There's a universe where Doctor Strange is movie Bob. Yeah. Oh my god. Your voice acting on Gotham High is amazing. All of you killed it. But more as Bruce Wayne is the best. Your talent is what makes a good rat. I just make him make weird noises all the time because it's funny. Yeah. He just makes anime noises. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. That Bruce sucks as well, but uh, to be fair, they oh, all suck in there. Uh, you're ruining the magic of zombie stuff. Good. Zombie stuff is usually stupid and nonsensical anyway. Could kick one down the stairs and it falls into pieces. They're not scary. Fast ones are kind of scary. Slow ones I always find. You just gotta work harder to make it function, you know? Because they're scary when there's shit tons of them. Anakin, prove to me you're me. Alt Anakin. Padme and I are happy with two children. Anakin. Liar. Poor guy. Wouldn't that be proof it's the multiverse though? That it worked out in that in that world. Um Ringy's sure. Banan is Rags's Jesus. Uh, they're talking about the banana that Rags erroneously believes is in my beak. Oh. It's gotta be. Yeah. Um, Chewie tells Edgia Ford. Uh, one way to say his name. Uh, he tells Edgia Ford. Mola turned his head in confused fear and noticed Meme singing Ave Maria and then Clown Boy. Alright. <laughs> Um, Night's Watch is Oz. We want him on here. Uh, that's one of the, the, uh, the show that Shad runs, I think. I mean, I wouldn't mind having, you know, if we invite Shad for some topic in the future, whatever it may be. Um, if he wants to bring his, uh, his cast, his show on, that'd be fine with us. And talk about yeah, yeah. whatever it may be. 
Uh, if you want media does rule of cool right... Oh no. Uh, oh no, here we go. <laughs> then watch Gendry's SWCS animated series. Grievous was great and there was a unique use of the force. But isn't it just like, wouldn't it just be good? It doesn't need to be just cool and thus floats by any criticism or anything? You know. I've become increasingly opposed to rule of cool. It, it yeah, whenever me. people say that, I'm like, uh, uh... They'll never know what you sacrificed, Wanda. Like an entire universe's main superhero force, that universe is kind of in big trouble now, rip Illuminati. Yeah, and no one's gonna fucking talk about it, probably. I, we have to keep reminding, like, that's nothing compared to the Vishanti thing. Like, I can't stress enough. It's real bad that she did that. It's kind of funny how Marvel produced the ultimate BS excuse for any bad writing before Loki and then immediately after the writing got any way worse. Oh, like as That's if they're funny. setting it up for themselves. Dying. The thing is, they, well, was... they dismantled it themselves, though, that excuse. Yeah. Presumably. I don't even know what Loki Season 2 is going to be about, and that's, that's being filmed right now, isn't it? Or it's about to be. Uh, I think so. And apparently the whole cast is coming back. I, I'm sure it'll be so fucking good. Uh, I feel like the end scene is a bit of a rip-off of Into the Spider-Verse. How does Into the Spider-Verse end again? Um, Everyone goes well, back again. to their timelines. I'm assuming it's the, they're alluding to more than that, right? Well, because I'm not sure what would it be because, um, oh, because uh, Kingpin's family, um, when when Miles is fighting Kingpin, Vanessa shows up. Oh, right. That Okay. I can see that. That's the... actually kind of uh, funny. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's interesting. That, but in spite of it, that as a payoff made way more sense than it does here. Exactly. Well, because Kingpin is like a person who was doing all of this to save it. Yeah, and and he's not unhinged insane because of an evil book. Apparently. <laughs> apparently, so yeah. Help. Batman. Where is it? Batwoman. Who are you? Master Chief. What am I? The Trinity yeah. of Tods. Yeah, it's fun, isn't it? Great, great stuff from a lot of them. Let's not forget that Chavez also leaves Illuminati Christine in the Sinister Strange universe. No, she probably took her back to hers. Yeah, I... I, I think when the portal opens, she's gonna put Christine in the... Uh, wait, sorry, so... She leaves... Yeah, because... Uh, uh, the interesting thing is... When they drop her off in the Illuminati world, presumably in the Illuminati fucking place, there's just alarms going off, loads of corpses everywhere. And like yeah. all these people like screaming yeah. and stuff. She's gonna be like, "Good luck, Christine. <laughs> See ya. See you later. It's your problem now." And then they do their fun little like, "Ah, the sun is bright, and we're thinking about what makes us happy ultimately." And it's just like Christine cuts back to her just frantically trying to explain the situation, covered yeah. in sweat, even arrested. People are like you would have facilitated the escape of several of the people who caused all of this, or something like that. And it's just like, no. You don't understand, and Doc Strange is like, ah, oh, it's so great how everything worked out. Um, I've literally heard the argument that Wanda did bad stuff and redeemed herself just like Tony Stark's company sold weapons to bad people and then he redeemed himself, as if the stakes are comparable. Uh, I, uh... Man. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> What can you say? What can you do? Uh, considering the magnitude of Defender Stranger's sacrifice, I say he is a good person, if not more honorable than the Don. Defender Strange did literally nothing wrong. The fact that he was gonna kill her... I only have criticism for him not chopping her head off. I guess that's the thing, he should have just killed her and not sucked her power away. Yep, that's the criticism. Or oh, used his yeah. fucking sling ring, but hey, whatever. He didn't have one of those, and we don't know why, so we can't mm. blame him for it. Do you anticipate continuing your Marvel coverage as long as they make movies, or do you see yourself getting Marvel fatigue and taking a break? I don't know that I'm going to watch She-Hulk. 
though I would rather just be told what I missed. Um, I'm not going to watch Echo. That's really pushing it for me. Like, who the fuck even is Echo? And it's like, that's a person from the show you didn't watch. And I'm like, I don't... That, that, I don't know why that's... Eh. But, like, I actually want to see Thor. I want to see Guardians 3. Um, and then I want to keep an eye on them for some projects. But I'm certainly not going to be able to watch all of it. We already haven't watched all of it. Um, famously, myself and Rags have not seen Eternals. And the three of us haven't watched all of Hawkeye. We watched Moon Knight, not because we're trying to keep up with Marvel, but because, like, hey, that, that show yeah, could be right. And, yeah, look at how that was rewarded. So, yeah. Um, we'll keep you updated in terms of our approach with Marvel, but for now, it's um, there's still some pieces left in terms of expecting maybe some content that we'd actually like from it, but a lot of it is now for review purposes. Yeah. Keeps us sharp. If America is a nexus being and someone time travels and splits the timeline America is in, does America suddenly vanish in one of those splits? Is there now two of her? Um, I don't know how people who think that all of it is different deal with that as a question. Because that means you can get more than one America, obviously. You can infinitely clone people with how things work in, in Loki if that's the timelines versus dimensions. But your brain's going to fall out of your skull if you try and make sense of all that. Imagine you call an, call an incursion in the in the universe where the fucking cloud monster eats you, in Loki. Like the the uh, world starts falling apart, the cloud monster's just like, um, <laughs> like what am I supposed to do about that? Multiverse of Madness is one of the most frustrating experiences I've had watching a film. It's so garbage. How do they keep doing it? They can't keep getting away with it. Apparently they can. Yeah. Is Crisis on Infinite Earths or this movie worse? That's very difficult to say, because uh, we didn't even uh, take well, Crisis on Infinite Earths seriously yeah. enough to know all of its problems. Crisis on Infinite Earths is longer though, so it probably is worse. Well, it probably like, it probably does score again, a, zero out of, a 0 0.5, sorry, if we were well, to really break it down, but yeah. we were just laughing at most of it, so... It's worth remembering that both Doctor Strange 2 and CW Arrow vs. Crisis on Infinite Earth put our characters in a place that is beyond the universes, where there yep. is breathable air, temperate uh, climate, Space beyond space, um, time beyond time, and it's just like, how the hell does that make... Yeah. Eh, why bother? It's worth keeping in mind. Drinker got it right in his review. The MCU doesn't know where they're going in their stories anymore, so why should we care? Um, yeah, all the, I don't... all that's left for me to be able to care is just going to be my remnant feelings for people like Thor or Star Lord or Drax, you know. Yeah. But um, I certainly have no faith in the people telling the stories anymore. Used to. I agree with Muller and Fringy. It's going to get much worse. MCU thumbs down. Hey, man. I don't care about the MCU thing. I don't give a shit about that. It's just the writing. We <laughs> like, could have had... They literally could have given, like, a spell that turns every character into a woman and it could still be well-written. Could have it's happened. It's all about the character writing at the end of the day. Uh, and they're also, like... There are, there are pieces of bad writing that have nothing to do with like, their desire to push women anywhere. Like, they're just bad at writing in general, anyway. Well, I mean, it's it's permeating the like, whole thing. Like, every project, except for no way home. Like, the, the Book of Ashanti's mechanics and what it means morally. That has nothing to do with, like, MCU stuff. That's just them being awful at writing. Mm -hmm. And there's loads of that that gets into these movies, because it's incredible how much they don't nobody, understand. Nobody cares. Either nobody knows or nobody cares. Yeah. yeah. Can we expect an unbridled rage for this movie? Well, if you were going to get one, I wouldn't tell you. So, I'll just have to say mischievous face, and then you can be like, oh, does that confirm it? Like, well, I could just say that for every movie you ask me about, so. No confirmation anymore. No hype is allowed to build. It's not even a wise decision for my channel, but that's just, that's just the way I'm going to do it from now on. Um, so, yeah, you'll get a video eventually that regards something. But who knows what it'll be. Big surprise. The MCU is like a TV show that got popular enough to get renewed way past its expiration date, so it's like, what do we do now? You mean like Simpsons? 
<laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, cool shots don't mean anything if the scenes that are they are a part of make no sense. I'm sick of that excuse because people use it to defend trash like this. I'm more than willing to appreciate a really good shot. Uh, For sure. But it's, it's not supported by good writing. That's even better. Because the the thing is, when you say like it's not, it doesn't make it good storytelling. You'll have people be like, there is storytelling in in a lot of visuals, and I'm like, all oh, right, yeah. So what I'm saying is. I would separate that out. Like, if you show, um, I don't know, a character standing above another one, and that's how they, they are narratively or something, I'd be like, yeah, that visual's great. Um, it's still going to be uh, a, a result of the, the writing, having built that foundation, that that visual was created. Um, so if the writing's all fucked, but the visuals are correct, I, I'm trying to even think what that looks like, right? Like, you've, you've, you've fucked up who is the powerful person in the conversation by having shitty dialogue, but the visuals properly represent it. So like, that just sounds like it ends up being incongruent. I don't even know what you end up with exactly, but... Love me some great visuals. Fix the script first, though, please. I honestly don't understand why you guys didn't like the movie. I loved the part where the giant tentacle monster grabbed the underage girl. Oh, no. Also, that's... It for the uh, Doctor Strange ones. Oh boy! Wow. Which means we shall go to a prior super chat catch up. Catch up. We, we will catch up with a catch up of a catch up. Is what I'm saying. Here they are. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is this is the catch up for the catch up for 147. Mola, you're gay. Alright. And the follow-up says, Zach, you're gay. That's directed at Zach Gilbert, the one that always calls me gay. And, uh, seems now there will be a gay war of some kind. Only plays thumbnail of the day is Obi-Wan. Is a thumbnail for Obi-Wan? Is that a game? Are you guys able uh, to check out what uh, that is referring to? Or? What's what the name of it? The base name? Oh, Oni plays thumbnail oh. of the day is Obi Wan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me. Ah, get a thumbnail that's, here. That's neat. What is it? Like, what what media is it regarding? Like a game or or trailer? I don't know what game it is. Um, it appears to be cool. some sort of game. Star Wars Obi Wan complete series. So this is the thumbnail. Well, it's a great thumbnail. Uh, apparently, it's uh, like a PlayStation Two or PlayStation. Yeah, game we play Obi Wan. I didn't know that. Yeah, Star Wars Obi Wan for the Xbox. This video of da 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 da. Damn, yeah. I didn't even know that existed. I didn't either. Um, Wings quote of the day. You think I ain't been vetted by the FBI already? I didn't do any of that shit. <laughs> the FBI vetted him. Bonus. Nah, man, I ain't worried about Chris Hadson showing up. You imagine Chris Hadson fucking popping his head in his room during a stream. Why don't you, uh... <laughs> well, you're already sitting, so... <laughs> In your opinions, what deserves to be called Star Wars Day? May 4th, for the pun. May 25th, for the release of New Hope. Um... No, May 4th is fine with me. Why don't you make May the month of Star Wars? I mean, to be fair, yeah, I'm fine with either of them. I don't really have passionate preference. So, excited for Kenobi? Sure. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Mm. And then they said, not. Love you, Massives. Remember to love your quirky duo, Scotty and Pippin. I remember. That was, that was, that was Armored Skeptic trying to remember Pippin, the Mary and Pippin. He said Scotty and Pippin. Scotty and <laughs> Pippin. Very interesting. Um. Hi, Rags. 
Hello. Scritches for the good boy. Thank you. Uh, now they got a quote from Rich Evans and it just says they have to. Don't know what it's referring to. Fringy, what is your opinion on the recent Roe v. Wade leak from the U.S. Supreme Court? I'm sure you have much to say. Hi, Rags. Hi. Yeah, uh, you get nothing. <laughs> Very well. This show doesn't exist. It's just another nightmare. I'm not even sure which one they're referring to. Probably Halo? I don't know. Maybe. I, we probably were talking about Halo <laughs> in the beginning. Don't you understand, Fringy? Her significance in the story is that Obi-Wan used a dog whistle to make Dalmatians drop kick her mum off a cliff, so now she's hunting him down. Duh. Oh, oh. maybe we're talking about, like, the Dune Twister or something. Oh, yeah, that's probably it, actually. Also, oh, hi, Rax. Hello. This series better start with hello there. I'm sure they'll have I, something to pan. They'll have, they'll have a hello there, yeah. There'll be one, at least. They know what to do now. True. Finally, in a place to support y'all's content. Any advice for how to better communicate issues one has with media and why it's bad to someone who isn't as literate with media? Well, just um, talk to them about what what do they think they value about stories and why they might not even have thought about it. And what well, their favorite people haven't, which is totally well, okay. A lot of people just go to watch movies and have a good time, and it's not like a big sort of you know process that they're going to be going through trying to figure out. Good place to start. Yeah. It sounds like a conversation that's almost like, why would we talk about that? But it's like, hey, we did a whole EFAP about it, kind of. We need to do the inverse yeah. of it, where we talk about all the bad things that happen with uh, stories. No, no. Sorry, Frank, I'm going to drag you into it. Yeah, I know you are. You have no consideration for my feeling. If I did, would, we, would you have dragged me to watch Halo? Uh, yeah. Point. Uh, don't you understand, Fringy? Oh wait, no, that was the one we just did. Uh, do, do. Oh yeah, but uh, they said finally in a place to support your content as well. So thank you for that. Um, don't worry about it if you if you're only just able to take care of yourself and stuff. Um. On Reddit, women walking a pit bull tries to stop a mugging. The pit bull attacks the woman being mugged and then attacks her own its own owner. The mugger is fine. Oh my god. That that's nice. so unfortunate. Uh, yeah. Um The writer for Obi-Wan also wrote Army of the Dead. Why tell me that? <laughs> I don't know we already knew that, maybe. I can't remember. It's probably something, I often forget the uh, the writing connections everyone has. I can't believe there's going to be a Star Wars movie, and we're going to say the guy who wrote Multiverse of Madness and Loki is behind this. Un wow. Because he got rewarded I with got, even uh, more projects. Well, look, it's, it's um, you got to take the good... Patty Jenkins isn't making that Rogue Squadron movie, and this is the, the trade. Also, I thought she is. Sure you only got delayed, right? I think mm. she's not doing it at all, right? And the film is delayed. She's not doing it anymore. I, uh, I didn't know that, but it might be, yeah. Um, well, I saw a thing that apparently the next Star Wars movie will probably be Taika Waititi's one. It's like, oh, so like no Star Wars movies for a few years still, at least. What an odd... All because of the disaster of the sequel trilogy plus Solo. And the, you saw that thing recently, right, guys? The, the, yeah. the Solo thing. Yeah. We can't it have... It almost seems like a troll. Like, a little like, bit. We it? all know what why that suffered. It wasn't... I, I like that we just admitted now that it's, it's terrible too. You know, like it just—it was a mistake. It's—it's it's as—it's yeah. it's as confirmed as it can possibly be that Star Wars was ripe for becoming the MCU, and then it just crumbled. And they were like, "Ah, fuck! What happened?" And then they that new method of doing it is through television. Yeah, they've built up a new foundation with television, and now they're probably still wondering, like, so how are we setting out to do our movies? Because you know, they still got it. Taika might release his Star Wars movie, let's say three years, four years from now, whatever, and it does incredibly well. If it did like a billion and a half, they'd be like, all right, another one, go, 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 John Watts, get your one out. Let's, we can, we, we, that dream of turning it into the MCU is still alive. It's still very much alive. That's a big priority for Disney, I would imagine. That's what I mean, man. It was never about like, it wasn't even about putting Story out too many at the same time. It's, it's literally just... The sequel trilogy was so embarrassingly bad and not at all what fans wanted. Mm -hmm. 
And they should have known that by the script. Fuck yeah. You kind of have to be a fan of Star Wars to pick that up, I guess. Can't expect them all, the, the people who have the IP, to be a fan of it, you know? Um, day two of reciting Maxwell's Bloodborne video until you, until you watch it. Side note. Which romance option from Mass Effect is best suited to your shepherd as opposed to personal favorite? Also high rags. Hi. Um, I think our shepherds will be different, right? Well, everybody's shepherd will be different to some extent. A little bit. Wow. I mean... And I've had multiple shepherds because I've done multiple playthroughs. Uh, generally, um, I don't know. I kind of like a lot of people. I think a lot of them are compatible because there's a lot of really cool characters in that. Yeah. I feel like I could get I could get along with a lot of different crewmates across the series. Well, I, I haven't played it, so I got nothing. Um, journeying further, John Bloodborne becomes conscripted into a service of the gay Elder God and the 60-year-old man he keeps as a pet. In doing so, he will begin hallucinating, taking dolls, spider people, and the great deep-fried and reversed audiovisual of a boss, I think. And, uh, stricken with the Habsburg disease, comes to the ancient city of London seeking treatment for the sins of his cousins. Alright. It's a... Uh, that's a pretty good way to summarize Bloodborne, I think, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, old Boba Fett would have killed the bikers for stealing his kill on that tribe that enslaved him. <laughs> yeah, probably. He'd have been like, you fucking kill stealers. That's why he blows him up, not because he's righteously getting revenge and then realizes he killed the wrong people and doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> doesn't care. He so good. Because the riders forgot about it. <laughs> I saw somebody who was uh, linking in the Discord that John Favreau apparently was recently talking about justifying his choice to make Boba Fett a good guy. Like, strictly. Okay. And um, I didn't what, see the quotes did... or anything. I just saw the at chat had posted it and said, I'm like the only person who liked Book of Boba Fett. And I just saw it, I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, no one fucking liked it. That shit has not aged well. What did you say, Frankie? Sorry. No. Nobody likes Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> It's just awful. John Bloodborne is given the ultimate task of killing an invisible infant to cure his anemia. True. Nice. That is tough. Um, so how about that attack on Chappelle, huh? Uh, I haven't looked into it, but it seemed bizarre. Uh, the guy got fucking it. ruined. Yeah, he got fucked up. Wouldn't recommend tackling a comedian on the stage, just saying. Mm -hmm. A big no. And then Chris Rock came out and said, was that Will Smith? Yeah. Wait, did he? Because that sounds hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. He, <laughs> he did. really did. Yeah. <laughs> I know about that much. I don't know much about what happened, but I know that. <laughs> I, it's not <laughs> I like funny. crazy or grandiose or anything. Someone just gets up on stage and the security instantly just fucking tackles him and drags him I thought he got to, to Chappelle, did he not? I think he got to Chappelle, but Just then about... like he got um yeah at that point it was it was it was kind of over for that guy didn't go didn't go great. Um ah finally it only took ten months. No idea what that's referring to, but at this point I'd assume a super chat being read out. Maybe. And that could be accurate. Mola, stop this gayness and play Mario Kart Wii. Double dash for life. That would actually be pretty cool. Have you guys seen the Northman yet, or do you plan to? Hi, Rags. Uh, I do plan to. I have not seen it yet. I plan I to see it, it as well. Plan to, yeah. I think there's still time. It's, it's still out and viewable. It's already uh, it's on streaming now, I think, already. Is it really? Yeah. Damn. Which, any film that's not doing well in theaters, I think they just rush it to streaming. Same as that way. Just try and maximize, get as much and now. Um, probably pointless, but Fringy Halo 4 is good. <clears throat> uh, I mean, I guess it depends on what you're saying. Like, overall, I think at this point it would be safe to say that mechanically that game's pretty weak. 
Like, from a design standpoint, it's, it's actually quite deficient. Um, and that's a big part of the game. Well, it's talked about a lot that, like, the Prometheans as a, as a faction are, like, pretty badly designed. Um, like, the Covenant, uh, the, the Promethean Knights are just broken, the core. Um, the, the Promethean weapons, not enough ammo drops, and, like, Promethean weapons, a lot of them just aren't viable. The only one that's really viable is the rifle, which means it's a lot of shooting from a distance. And so you've got that problem, and then, of course, multiplayer was just shit. Um, and so what he, what he left with would be the story, and I think the story's got problems. I think it's got strengths, for sure. It's not like Halo 5 that's, like, utterly meritless, narratively. I think it's got strength, but, yeah, I don't think it's a very good game. Uh, my hot take. Halo started declining when Halo 2 came out. They tried to go too big, too early in terms of story. I think you're just yeah, wrong. I think, I think you're just wrong. This you're just flat out wrong. I have nothing to add. <laughs> I'm just like, very well. Uh, Christian's mum was a bit insane. According to the Christian documentary, she's a bit emotionally abusive, or at least she was. No, nobody's home. Uh, like I said, I, I got very little context on the whole story. Likewise. Chris Hemsworth studied Hassan to prepare for his role as Kevin in Ke Ghostbusters 2016. That would make sense. A great. Uh, representation of Hassan in there. Yeah. Uh, 343 could make could be made up of babies needing five breaks for a six hour shift. I can't personally take their word 100%. Uh, Alright, and what has everyone been playing? Uh, I've been playing a lot of Mario Kart 8, um, but I've also started a playthrough of Reach. I'm trying to think of I, I I don't know what I've played recently. Uh, I want to replay Bioshock. Now that the conversation we had the other day, now that was on the offline. Yeah. Um, well, I'm playing I've Double been Dash. Playing... Oh yeah, you've been playing that. Uh, been playing. What about you? <clears throat> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. I... Oh, right there? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's all over, everyone. No idea where that came from. But um, I have been playing a lot of, oh, a decent variety. Uh, StarCraft II, Guild Wars II. Um, been playing Battlefield V and Sea of Thieves. Been playing that a bit lately. Highly recommend Sea of Thieves. That's super fun. Um, been up to some, I, I just bought RimWorld yesterday and I've been playing some of that. That's pretty fun so far. Um, some Risk of Rain 2. Deep Rock Galactic, some of that. Uh, yeah, decent amount. Stuff here and there. There you go. There you go. Would you ever consider starting a Minecraft server for EFAP Gaming? Also high ranks. Hello. That would be up to rags to do because I don't know Minecraft really at all. Uh, I think there's other stuff that we could do that would probably be better for streaming. Oh, there you go. Uh, <coughs> what movie did you think the side plot was better than the main one? Mine is Kong Skull Island. Two World War II enemies work together to escape the island. Hmm. Movie side with the main plot, plot. Looks better than the main plot. Yeah. I feel like that way in some Batwoman episodes where I'm like, go back to Batwoman. Oh, there'll be episodes where I'm like, go back to, uh, Luke. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, that's probably a good example. The Luke plotline was way more interesting in... Season... was that season two? Or one? I can't remember anymore. I think that was... One... I think? I don't know, it's all just like mush in my head. I'm trying to remember what color Batwoman was, and I just can't. Because she wasn't even involved in that scene. Plot that was sniper plot was sniper. Though. Yeah. That was the sniper, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I can't remember. Um. Oh yeah, that's right. Wonder Woman two, the the. Oh, uh, Max. Max Bell. Oh yeah, Max Lord. was much more interesting than she was. Yeah. Yes, much more interesting than she was. That's a good one. Yeah. That was a very good one. 
it was awful, but that's a good example of that. So it's like uh, Kano and Mortal Kombat. Oh, but I don't know if he's a side. He's, he's not really a side, but he's a side character. Them. Yeah, he's side character, but not a side plot. He's with them. Yeah. Uh, you guys should you really... Might... Yeah. Well, if you want to add one more. Depending on who you like most, Lord of the Rings might count if you, if you really like certain characters over others for whatever reason. Um, it's like, oh, go back to... Frodo and Sam, or but that that's just preference because everything that's good. Mm -hmm. Um, you guys should really check Movie Bob's Twitter, lol. I assume they're referring to him because uh, someone on the Discord posted this. He he quote tweeted me not understanding the the Fab Four reference, which people then went on to say, but that's not what the reference is. It's not a reference to the Beatles. Which is what everyone was making fun of me for not getting um, on that tweet. Apparently it really is a reference to in the 60s there was a band called the Fantastic Four. They're not the Beatles, they're a different thing. That's what the reference is too. Um, so yeah, I, I, there's a clip of me saying that I didn't get it. And then saying that chat have informed me what it is and fair enough. And Movie Bob was like... I guess, uh, I don't know, really upset that I didn't get the reference. It's really weird because, like, of all the things Movie Bob could ever quote tweet about BFAP, that's the one he goes for? I was just like, alright. Because, um, yeah, I, I just don't know all of the references to things. And then, um, when I was talking to people in the, in the Discord about it, I was just like, yeah, I just didn't know that that was... The Fantastic Four didn't make me think Beatles. It's just not not how I associate those things in my head. And um, and then they were like, it's not about the Beatles, it's about something called the Fantastic Four in the 60s. So, um, at this point, I'm just like, confused. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it all alone. You guys, you have your reference, okay? I am not good with my bands from the 60s, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, Rag, since you liked Princess Mononoke, are Studio Ghibli's other films a consideration, or are they shunned like the rest of anime for you? No, they're, uh, they're I, I just haven't, uh, I, I don't shun them. We'll get around to them. In fact, we, we've, we've tossed the idea around of doing that sometime. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, it, it, it's on our to-do list to catch up on a lot of uh, those movies. Well, I, um, I rewatched Spirited Away relatively recently. I still think that film is amazing. It's, uh, one of my faves is between that and Howl's Moving Castle for me, I'm not sure, but to be fair, I haven't seen a lot of them, so. A wonderful movie. Intervention time. Sitch likes Bioshock Infinite. Ooh. I mean, we don't have to kill him, right? No, we have to go to the multiverse where... How? That's another fucking thing sort of timeline infinite it is yeah. oh stop doing these I'm, I'm already sick of them uh let's see um yeah i yeah i hate bioshock infinite a lot have, have people just turned on that now or infinite um i don't know i think it's like 50 50 but yeah, it Sitch fair. loving it is still kind of a lore break of some kind, right? Like, he needs to... I'm, I'm not saying kill him, like I said, but maybe put him in prison, you yeah. know? Yeah, we need to... He needs to be re-educated on the correct way of thinking. Yeah, he likes his logic in storytelling, so why the hell does he like Bioshock Infinite? <laughs> no clue. Explain yourself! Um... Mm hmm which would you prefer to own as a pet? A horse-sized jumping spider with the intelligence of a dog, or a giant octopus capable of living on land? A horse size so there's options again? A horse-sized jumping spider with the intelligence of a dog, or a giant octopus capable of living on land? And this is which I would rather be? Have as a pet. Mm -hmm.
Hmm. So when when they frame it as which would you prefer, it makes it sound like I'm invested in having one or the other, and I have to choose which one I want more. I would prefer not to have either. Um. But if I was to choose one, I think I might go with the big spider. Intelligence of a dog. Yes, so it would take me a while to get used to the giant fucking terrifying thing when it's like trying to just be like cute and happy. Well, I don't know. Jumping spiders are depending on which one it is, they're not like jumping spiders are are the are very, they're not like scary looking. Size of a horse though? I don't know. Yeah, but I don't I don't know. I mean, if it's your if it's your friend and it's your like a dog and it and it loves you very much. I think I could and, and plus, they're like fluffy spiders, too. Um, I'd have to just be convinced of one or the other. I'm really not sure. I feel like with the octopus, I can just leave it alone and let it do its thing. But I guess I could do it with the spider as well. Though the science would want the spider, right? And I, well, I feel like the octopus, you'd have to keep it wet. Even it could be if it could live on land, you'd have to keep it wet. Whereas I, I just give it away to like a finding, place that can actually uh, take care of it at that point. <laughs> hmm. Hi, Rex. Hello. Christ Righteous is a Christian Hassan that steals from others and makes money off it. Uh, yeah, kind of. I have no idea what that is. For those of you who don't know, I did a collaboration with Logic, the channel. Um, he's, um, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> it's like something in the back of my throat. I don't know what it is. COVID. But um, he's a he's a really good guy. He's been on the channel once. We need to get him back on again. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did a collab with him on two videos, responding to a guy that he had been uh, that he'd done videos on before. And boy, oh boy, is he is he a crazy one? Uh, he is. Ooh, what a what a character this uh, this guy is. His name's uh, Armando Calvo. Don't worry, his name's all public and everything like that. It's part of his. He he wrote a book and everything. Um, and his book was basically practically fully plagiarized. Uh, it's a like a Christian apologetics book that he guarantees will convert any atheist and. He was very, very proud of it, and it is full of horrific spelling errors and grammatical errors, blatant copy pasting from other books and articles. It's it's a mess. Uh, if you want to check it out, you can go to um, you can go to Logic's channel, L O G, I C K E D, and uh, check out those videos. Logic's cool. I like him a lot. He's a good guy. I also like Logic. We should get him back on sometime. We should. Um, on the subject of Bear vs. Gorilla, a YouTuber named Seth the Programmer made a video on Grizzly vs. Silverback and the bear had much more dangerous <laughs> facts. Fair enough. I do not know enough about both of them to figure out just who comes out the winner. Um, uh, Animal of the Hour, the Piura Chilensis. Chilensis? Piura Chilensis. Uh, well, P Y U R A. And then Chilensis is mostly intuitive. I'm looking at it now. It is a. Pure, is, a is a tourniquet? Is a tunicket? A tunicate being a marine invertebrate member of the... Da, 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 it's, it's a weird thing. Let me get you a picture of it. Copy image. Post image. Yeah. What does it want? What does it want from our world rags? I don't know. You it looks like you can eat them. Oh. This is what they look like when they're... um. Uh... Hmm. Man, it looks delicious. So, I have never ate an a, a, an animal that I did not enjoy. 
But this is looking like it pushes the bounds of what I might find. I mean, maybe they taste hella good, but they don't look hella good. So, it says cuisine. Um, the meat, which has a strong flavor, can be eaten raw or cooked. Its taste has been described as like that of iodine, or quote-unquote, something like a sea urchin, though less delicate in flavor, or slightly bitter, soapy in taste. It is normally cut into pieces, flavored with chopped onion, cilantro, and lemon. Minced and boiled, it serves as an element to, of many dishes, particularly arroz con puré picado, or rice with minced puré. Uh, it can be fried and eaten on bread. Wow. Cool. Oh, it's its blood is clear. Oh. It's clear blood. How about that? Yeah. Uh, How many animals have flavored blood? Probably um, not a lot. Maybe well, fish if they have blood, maybe. You're gonna want like what? as we learned from Dargo, you need to get your blood running clear so that it's not poisonous for Luxons, you know? Someone in chat will know what I'm talking about. There's gonna be one guy. And he's gonna put a thumb up, and I'm gonna be like, "That guy's cool." I'm waiting for it. Someone out there. Someone, someone will get it in time. You know, three people have gotten it. Thumbs down. I'll kill you. Farscape. It gives me nerd cred to no references like that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, hi, Moola. Who the hell is Moola? Also, hi, Rex. Hello. I don't know. Some guy who's just re-uploading all my stuff. And you guys' stuff. Up stuff. Ridiculous. Unbelievable. In chat, I can't say Pornhub, nor even Pomhub. <laughs> Pomhub. Pomhub? It's because it kind of looks like Pornhub. You can't do that. I'm, I'm very glad they banned the use of Pomhub. I, I wouldn't want anyone getting that done, you know. Um, I feel like older Super Chats were much more edgy. Lol, is that a challenge, Mola? Though since Ra left, I kind of agree. I, I, I imagine there's more restrictions as well, uh, as time goes on. They're not going to announce these restrictions, they're just going to pop them on. If you get goo on your hair, do you not get it wet? Fringy's goo becomes acidic when saturated with water and can burn you, but is this a flaw or a feature? I don't know why you would make up such lies. I don't know what, why you would feel compelled to do that. Propaganda in the Super Chats, can you believe it? Yeah. Uh, Biden just appeared at a ceremony honoring Paralympic athletes, and during the wheelchair basketball award he yelled at them, Don't jump, lol. Did he? Or are we? Is it a meme? I don't know. I'm that's a meme. I feel like I, I would have heard of it if it wasn't a meme. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it was, if it wasn't a meme, I feel like I definitely would have heard of it. Uh. Um, it says Biden yells, "Don't jump during Paralympic ceremony." Wait, that's something that you. That's that's like a thing that happened. Uh. Someone in chat said it's a thing that happened. I don't know, though. The last time someone said that was a thing that happened, I remember I looked it up and I was very disappointed because it just wasn't true. So... <laughs> this... this video of it? Oh, God. The problem is, like... You know, it's far from impossible. It's just... That's so fucking awkward. How come I haven't heard of this? Why are you surprised by this? Because, like I said, I thought I would have thought I'd have heard of this. Um, happened but, a couple weeks ago, apparently. Yeah, I guess I missed it. Uh, Rewatching Simpsons and holy shit, the episode where Homer thinks he has 24 hours to live hits hard. His half bro is also Danny DeVito. I find it funny. Yeah, there's uh, one fish, two fish, blowfish, bluefish. I think is in season two. One fish, two fish, red fish, bluefish is one of my personal favorite novels. Yeah, obviously, Simpson names are often references, but, uh... That episode is... He's fed a blowfish because he's bored with, like, the menu at a seafood place, and, um... Yeah. The rookie yeah. chef believes he may have fed Homer something poisonous, and he's told he only has 24 hours to live, and so he writes a bucket list. 
and uh, he gets close to finishing at the end, and the, and the episode gets a little, uh, a little, a little, a little dark and deep on you. Simpsons. They did, they did that they yep. occasionally back in the day. Uh, missed the reaction, so I'm gonna rewind, but you massives are awesome. Looking forward to the endgame video, Fringy. Ah, back in time, wow. see? <laughs> and Rags, oh, yeah. uh, will your Mando video come out before or after Mando Season 3? Also, hi, Mubes and Moodle. Hello. Um, hi, uh, I, I, um... Season 3 is, is Mando expected season three? to come out at the end of this year or the beginning of next year, so that's your timeline. And at least by this time next year, Mando Season 3 will be out. Yeah, I think so. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you guys need to work on your lap time. Lap time? You guys. It's, I feel like it's just... Just... <laughs> mubes. Well, unless you watch my streams. Yeah, maybe he's, he's, he's just shitting on me and you's ability to play Mario Kart. Can you believe it? Maybe. But cool. I don't know. I'm, I'm up there playing at the high level online anyway. Well, I, I mean, I just came first. I come first a lot, you know, I, and I'm on the yeah, hardest difficulty, again, so what else can I do? Online. If you were playing online, you wouldn't be coming first as often. There are some, uh, there are some seasoned, seasoned, Halo, uh, not Halo, <laughs> <laughs> seasoned uh, Mario Kart players out but, there um, in this wide world of ours. Well, at that point, though, I don't need to work on my lap time, right? So that's the context I'm playing it in, so I'm fine. Well, that's true, lap time actually does... Well, I guess it's relative, right, compared to... Compared to, uh... Well, know. I don't plan to play Double Dash online anytime soon. I don't even know if there's, uh, I much of there's anyone any to play with. Yeah. Uh, I just graduated college. Thank you all for the entertainment that you've given me for the past three years. Your group depression will never cease to amuse me. And high rags. <laughs> <laughs> Hello! Um... Well, hey, congratulations, and I'm glad you enjoy the antics yeah. that we get up to. I'd play with you, Mubla. Thank you, Das. Be great. Uh, hey, Metal, read Beware Pokedex entry. Oh, and they want him to read the Beware one and the Sligu Sun Pokedex entry. Any chance either of you could do that? Or yeah, uh, absolutely. No. <laughs> Brian wants to. That's fine. Sligoon. I will post both of them. Hey, Metal. Be... Beware... Pokemon... Poke... Pokedex entry. Alright, and now we have... Sligu... Sun... Pokedex. Um... Let's see. All right. Let's start with Beware. So, Beware is a normal fighting type Pokemon introduced in Gen 7. It is known as the Strong Arm Pokemon. When Beware is acting in a friendly fashion, just swinging its arms around, you must never dare to approach it carelessly. It is acknowledged to be a dangerous Pokemon even within the Alola region. You may see warning signs posted near places it resigns. When Beware grows fond of its trainer, it may show that feeling in a fond embrace, but the force of that hug is tremendous. Trainers must teach these Pokemon how to restrain their strength when showing affection. So it can kill you if it likes you by hugging you to death. It, like, it'll crush you, essentially, I'm if it... Sometimes I wonder who's writing these and if they need any approval from anybody at, like, you know, whoever fucking approves yeah, these things. like Game Freak or Nintendo or the Pokemon Company or whatever it's called. They, they like, over the years, they'll just be like, have you finished writing it? It's like, I have. Would you like to read I them? Have. And they're like, no, I'm sure they're fine. You're like, all uh, right. Great. I trust you. <laughs> I trust <Jimmy>. you. <laughs> Seriously, uh, if you me... want to read it, I don't know. Uh, Sligoo is... Where, cause it, it gives me different, there's different, like the, the last site, let, let me go to Sligoo, Sligoo, okay. It's a dragon type Pokemon introduced in Gen 6. It's known as the soft tissue Pokemon. It's four horns are a high performance radar system. It uses them to sense sounds and smells. Sounds all right. Um, is it supposed to be like a weird creepy thing? Mm. Because the 
There's a lot of Pokemon sites that tell you about Pokemon stuff. So I'm wondering if... Um, oh, I think I found the... Uh, although this Pokemon isn't very strong, its body is coated in a caustic slime that can melt through anything. So predators steer clear of it. Wow. That's so you'd have great to... Defense. So, yeah, it is. Um, hey, uh, Pokemon I have. Does it... Punch <laughs> that Sligoo, and it's like... Fuck no. Does it just, wherever it walks, it just, it just melts down into the ground and melts further. It just melts until it hits until the, it core the core of the core and burns horribly. <laughs> Becomes a part of Earth's core. That's how Earth's core regenerates over time or something. It's these creatures. Lagoon <laughs> is fuel. It's <laughs> planet fuel. The natural process. The planet is beginning to heal. Um... When's Aquaman coming out? I want to see a reaction to the news broadcast. Uh, is that when they they talk about like the the rubbish that's come up from the sea or whatever? I think so. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing us react to that film as well. It's uh, sick. <laughs> as far that's as I'm funny. aware, Meme is 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 working on it. Um, obviously, it's just gonna be a matter of letting him uh, do his thing. Same for. Good old Das with Batwoman and a couple of other projects, but as I alluded to in a previous EFAP at some point, uh, there's a lot of busy things happening in the world of IRL right now for little old me, um, and so we're in a we're in a slower period of um, creation than will be soon enough. That's 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 the best way I can put it to try and remain as mysterious and strange as possible. Though, because uh, as you may have noticed, there's been a lot less EFAP movie releases. In fact, there hasn't been one in a while. There will there be. Has been. Uh, you'll be getting Kenobi, so you know, consider yourselves lucky in that regard, hey guys. I'll wait to. Oh <laughs> yeah. See whatever. Uh, it's gonna be, be great. great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Um, it is gonna be great. Yeah, plenty more is on the way. Is is the short version, uh, including Aquaman. It'll 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 cube. Uh, Left-right dichotomy originates with the French Revolution. Hmm. I don't know why that would have come up. I don't even... I, 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 yeah, I, I, I can't add to that, I'm afraid. All right. I feel like that's not true either. Um, but then again, I'm not even sure like what left-right dichotomy even means. Really. It feels like a really broad shorthand that doesn't describe anything meaningful. Um, here they five, you deserve it. I gotta go to work. There's only one thing I ask. Please work on your lap times. They're rather lackluster. Oh my god, you just can't catch a break. I just, I don't know that we I... Just, we gotta work on our lap times. I, yeah, I'm... I'm gotta speed up. I'll, I have to, I'll have to get better. You know, all this is just me training to get better. Um, practice makes perfect, as they say. Mm-hmm. Uh, reference to Maxor of the day in this game, you play as John Impact, an extra-dimensional being whose brother was eaten by Mega Bloks and is forced to navigate through the land of Avatar, the last airbender for Weeaboos. <laughs> I just like the eaten by Mega Bloks. <laughs> eaten by Mega Bloks. What a terrible way to die. I don't even I mean, know how God, it works. That'd probably yeah. be pretty hellish, wouldn't it? Yeah. There might be a lot of... <coughs> <laughs> oh my God, you are, you are struggling today. There's You're just, right. I, I feel like there's like um like maybe I drank something earlier and there's like yeah. droplets of it in the back of my no, throat. You know what I'm talking mm, about? I, I absolutely know what you're talking about. It's a very that, real I'm not, life. I'm not sick, I don't have any allergies. I'm just like that you get that scratch in the back. Um yeah. Yeah. but I was about to say mega blocks, maybe if it's large enough to eat you, there's enough spaces underneath, like inside all the empty spaces in the mega blocks that you could just hide. And because Mega Bloks are so obnoxiously large, you might be able to just, like, build a house in there and have build a kitchen. A house. <laughs> yeah, you just. Build well, a that's, family. What, that's what you could do. You could deconstruct a Mega Bloks creature from the inside out, right? Maybe. I just assumed it would have the equivalent so... of Mega Bloks stomach acid that gets you. I don't know. Oh, no. It's like the Slagoo. No. Speaking of, they would now like you to check out Gengar's. Pokedex entry in Sun specifically. Ooh, I know, I know Gengar. He's one of the first I ones. Know Gengar. Well, I yeah, think I most people do, but the fact that they're saying check it in Sun, I assume Suns is different. Maybe. I don't maybe. Know. Yeah. Gengar's cool. 
I just like Gengar. I always preferred so, Haunter. I think he looks cooler. Are you reckon? Kinda, Ultra yeah. Sun. Wait, I damn I'm, I'm, I'm I think I'm mixing oh, okay. up. There were three of them, weren't there? The three. Yeah, Ghastly the Haunter there. and Gengar. Okay, so I'm looking at this Pokédex shows both Han. No, it it shows what is that? Gengar. It shows like two different versions. Hmm. Okay. So, they told me to look up Sun, and there's a Gengar and a Mega Gengar, apparently. That's a new thing that they've done. So, Sun, there's Sun and there's Ultra Sun in terms of versions. Sun says, Should you feel yourself attacked by a sudden chill, it is evidence of an approaching Gengar. There is no escaping it. Give up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that's great. That's some, that's some fringy that's, level survival that, strategy right there. That, that, that's great. I like that a lot. That's really funny. Just give and up. We, have <laughs> we have Ultra Sun, the flavor text is. You can hear tales told all over the world about how Gengar will pay a visit to children who are naughty. Oh no. Now, ultra, I, I guess there is a, there is a Mega Gengar, right? And in Sun, it says, Gengar's relationships are warped. It has no interest in opponents unless it perceives them as prey. And the <coughs> Ultra Sun flavor text is, it tries to take the lives of anyone and everyone. Oh. It will even try to curse the trainer who is its master. Jeez. Wow. Jeez. Watch out. They let 10 year olds have these. Yep. Yeah. Pokemon's Which even world. when I was a kid, I was like, I don't, am I responsible enough to, <laughs> to control these creatures? Like, even I, as a 10-year-old, I feel like I have this awareness that maybe I'm not cut out for this sort of thing. Doctor Strange is a 0 out of 10 when it comes to world building. I'm surprised you went for world building as the... Uh... <laughs> as opposed to just everything. But also, I don't think it's zero is like theoretical. <laughs> as far as I'm, I'm not concerned. sure it is theoretical, is it? Because we basically said like it's not, it's not any, it's hard to even theorize what a zero looks like. It's like it's there's no it's coherency. Be, it would be incomprehensible to the point that it is utterly, uh, uh, yeah, utterly incomprehensible as opposed to virtually incomprehensible. As I'm just saying that it's never been... I don't know that there's anything like a 0 out of 10 story that exists. <laughs> never. Yeah. Uh, started watching you guys around two years ago and finally caught up last month. Seeing you live is weird. Could you please pre-record EFAPs? Slash ad. <laughs> Very well. We'll start doing it and I'll just stream them live. And we're going to do our best to predict everything you guys may have said at the time. To answer it in real time as well sometimes. And... Uh, it's gonna be eerie. Some of the stuff we'll be talking about, it'll like be happening in that very moment. Uh, in chat, mm -hmm. whatever, so yeah. Prepare to be impressed is all I'm saying. Uh, why does Rags raise the pitch of his voice at the end of all of his questions like he's British? Laugh my ass off. I was about to say, do I? <laughs> Sometimes. Um, I think that's just general inflection that's useful for forming an interrogative sentence. Um, but there's plenty of times where I might say, I don't think so, um, or things of that nature, but the, I'm, cer I'm, well, I'm certain questions. there's patterns in the way that I speak. Uh, or, I don't think so. Uh, what do you mean by that? How are you today? I think, yeah, I think it depends. I know that it's kind of, I have the, I'm focused on, I'm, I'm thinking about it in a more conscious way now, but maybe certain questions. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way I talk. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. Maybe. We all speak a little a little differently. That's true. Mm -hmm. uh, Metal's here. He speaks German, right? That's my favorite disability. Don't worry. I still love you, Metal. Oh, oh that's nice. We also have a nice audience. It's so friendly and wholesome. Uh, no, no. Give Zack the post of personal assistant to Zack Snyder. He'll just spin in circles harmlessly. Job done. Um, I guess that could keep him busy if his job is to but put this to help himself. Being our options. 
Oh, like be his own personal assistant. So that he gets confused and that just keeps him busy. <laughs> He's just confused. Why are there two of me? <laughs> What's going on? Wait, how can I help me be doing me helping me? What? That is, yeah, that'll be great. Yeah. Hassan would fail Ava's Turing test? I, mean, I don't even know what that would signify, that he fails the <laughs> Turing. <laughs> She's like, he must be a really badly programmed robot, he can't be human. <laughs> like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Replaying the Halo campaigns, just finished 3 and starting Reach. Thank goodness they never made any games after that, right? Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Look, it's a nice cohesive whole. You can easily sort of ignore everything that comes afterward. Man, thinking about I think it, it helps because of how well the ending of three is. You you really can just be like, yeah, and that's reach the is, end. Reach is just full circle. Ties and right it's a back prequel. So was that um yeah. yeah? Was that a big deal for Halo fans then? The fact that they were like the next one's going to be Reach, considering all the lore you understood to be about that um, event it's, it, it, In a sense, it's a big deal because part of the marketing was you already know like what the end is. Because it's like, yeah, you know, like, Reach Falls, that was, like, a big part of the mm -hmm. understanding of that game. Everybody knows that it's the so They end. made it into, like, a Rogue One type situation. Um, it's, well, Rogue One well ahead of Rogue One, because the whole, the whole point of the game is, like, Noble Team, um... I know that there's some people, because I think it's, um, it conflicts with, uh, the Fall of Reach novel. But, like, if you take it in terms of the games, it's, it's essentially, yeah, Noble Team, they're defending Reach... Oh no, Reach is doomed. Okay, what now? And it's like, well, you gotta get Cortana to the Pillar of Autumn. That's like the mission, and everybody drops off one by one. The only person yeah. who survives is June. And then Noble Six dies on his own, left behind on Reach, having completed his mission, dies, and then it's like, yeah, but what you did was instrumental. Yeah, because I remember because liking you, the Reach campaign. Halo. I remember the Reach campaign more than I do the Halo 3 campaign. It's kind of weird. Uh, Reach is a really strong campaign. Um, I don't think the characters are awesome, but I think that the tone is really strong in, uh, in Reach. Yeah, I think it does well with the tone. And the presentation is really cool as well, because like I said, I've been replaying it. It's all like, a lot of it is found footage, uh, camera angles that are like... Uh, the, the, the callback to Truth and Reconciliation mission, when it opens the cutscene, the cameraman is like jumping over the rocks and like maneuvering along the cliff face like a real person. There's a lot of really interesting choices they made in terms of the cinematography. It's cool. Um, I, th there's a lot of great, like, uh, use of framing in that game. It's it's really impressive in that regard. Even if the characters aren't, like, that deep or anything. Mm. I like Reach a lot. I think it's a really strong campaign. Who wins in a fight, Master Chief or Samus? Uh... I actually don't know. I feel like Samus. I intuitively might come would out say Samus, if because the of all of the abilities. Well, and the fact that Samus has what like a hundred or ten shields at, at maximum on the, instead of just the one. Right, whereas Chiefs. Uh, well, yeah, because it's like what wins, um, the various suit or uh, or the various suit or um, Mjolnir armor. It's like uh, probably, probably, yeah, probably uh, the various suit. And then it's Samus just when is, you combine all of Samus's abilities yeah. as well on top, because she's enhanced as well. Like Chief is a super soldier, but she basically is too. She's got that Chozo DNA. I was going to say Metroid with the shit DNA that she pulls off. Too. Metroid as well, so she's got like hyper crazy DNA, and yeah, I, she's got. Crazy yeah, abilities. there's there's arguments to be made though about like, well, what if Chief has a Spartan laser? Can she tank that? And it's like maybe I don't know. She, I think, she, uh, well, the problem would be that she moves. Uh, <laughs> Samus is a pretty good guy, but Chief has super strength <laughs> because he's a robot. <laughs> That's a good point, John. I feel like, yes, yeah, I, I feel like Samus has got it in the bag. Um, actually, yeah, I feel like it's it's actually pretty easy for her. Uh, not easy, but like she well, like, she's gonna win. That one we we've had this conversation before, but it's one that took a while of I, I've had this conversation with my friends so many times over the fucking decades of existence. Just uh, Master Chief versus uh, the Alpha Big Daddy. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like there's so much to go through in terms of the potential win losses for both of them. Meanwhile, Samus, yeah. I feel as though more often wins than loses. I think it's just that um, Samus has uh, a lot of abilities at her disposal that Chief doesn't have, like. Aside from shooting, Chief 
and and punching, you know, like in close quarters, Chief doesn't have a lot of options. Whereas um, Samus has got like multiple beams at her disposal on the fly. She's got all of her crazy fast movement abilities as well. Um, yeah, like I I believe that Chief wouldn't be able to land a shot with like the Spartan laser on Samus. She's too fast. It feels what like if you're fighting Master Chief, his Spartan laser would be like a video game boss weapon, where it's like, oh, here's the red beam, don't stand in it. A little bit. Um, uh, what if what if she lost all her upgrades? Um, like if it was just if they were both, Samus, like yeah, if Metroid were... 1, uh, Metroid Prime 1, yeah, when she loses everything. They're both um, without their I... armor and weaponry of any kind, it's just their base bodies, like... Yeah, it's probably him, right? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, think I would say that it depends on what point in time. If we're, like, early in Samus's history, then I think it would be cheap. But by the time we're up to Metroid Dread, she's probably going to win. Um, it's, it's just her DNA, like, it's crazy. Um, yeah, I, f I feel like uh, earlier in her career it would be cheap, but then later it would be her. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, John, you looking forward to Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> Coming. Oh, we got so much to talk about. Oh. It is. It does feel weird because the guests will have like we haven't talked to any of them about this show. Uh, no, at all. First, and yet first all of us will likely have concluded something similar. I well, I mean, it would seem that way. Yeah. Uh. Chief has insane reflexes. I know he does, but like Samus is. I thought she does too, right? I thought she did. Samus, yeah. is part, Samus is part human, part Shozo, and now part Metroid. I don't know what to say. <laughs> like, like you, you think about all of the abilities that that gives you. Um, it's 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 not comparable to Chief. like Chief is super duper powerful, but like Samus, goddamn, basically a superhero at this point. <laughs> Well, she always was, I guess, in a sense. I hope that they become friends and fall in love with each other. Yay! That's what we need more uh, chief sex I, I scenes. Think, I think she would no. She, whoa, no, whoa. I don't. Think, I don't think she'd like John Halo very much. Um, she wouldn't like, like no one. I wouldn't like him either. She would hate that universe well, in the show. Hey, she'd be like everyone's dumb. Yeah, like, and then she'd be like, wait, so like they got like an emotional chip that suppresses their emotions, and that's what makes them Spartans? She's like, yeah. It's like, huh? I just kind of keep them under control, like myself <laughs> personally. Oh, you know what she'd okay. think? If she went to the Halo Halo show universe, she'd think it was like the Dark World from Metroid 2. <laughs> like, I must be in some kind of horrible universe. I want to go to the Light World. I don't want to go to the Dark World. Oh, yeah. oh, wow, look at this next one. Fringy, I look up to you a lot. Thanks for being you. Oh, thanks. That's nice. <laughs> and... Coincidentally, regarding Halo, I don't think delays could save it. I think the developer incompetence is the root. My evidence is the year-long delay we already had. Oh, they're talking about the game this time. Um. Well, so the problem is that it's uh, it's complicated. More that game obviously restarted at some stage. I think there's now like reports that came out that they dabbled with it being a hero shooter for a brief period as well. It sounds like they had absolutely no idea what they wanted that game to be. They were chasing trends, and so they went around and around in circles for too long. But the game had been announced, and it's like, well, there is an expectation that this needs to come out at some stage. Mm. Um, I don't see how an extra year could hurt, <laughs> that's for sure. Whether or not it would be, like, at an awesome state, that's one thing, but, I mean, it's just not... A another year would have helped, because, as we can see, it's gonna be at the end of this year, maybe even later, that we're going to have all of the core functionality that people expected, like Forge and Campaign Co-op and everything. Um, do, 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 do. There's still hope for games. We got Elden Ring. There's plenty of good games that come out, there's honestly. plenty of great games, yeah. And similarly, there's probably plenty of good films that come out, I just don't end up seeing a lot of them. Uh, very few coming out that are mainstream high budget, though. Jurassic World Dominion is out, like, in a couple of weeks, isn't it? I don't think I'm going to have time for that with Kenobi and the thing I'm working on right now. Like, mm. don't I don't think so. Um, but everyone's going to want me to do something for it. Cause... Well, I mean, presumably we'll be watching it and doing an episode on it, right? Or, or do you not even... Um, yeah... 
Uh, well, it's, uh, I mean, hey, look, th this is something that's worth remembering as well. Top Gun comes out, like, next week, and apparently it's pretty good. Maybe that'll be a fun, like, one to, to cover. Even though I, I actually haven't I'm, seen Top Gun. This is the thing, I've seen Top Gun, but I'm so, like, not passionate about it that uh, it's really down there if you guys want to cover that. Um, I'm not, like, super passionate. I, it's just that when I've gone to the movies and I see the trailer, it's got a lot of cool shots and things, like a lot of cool dogfights going on. It looks like it'll be sort of an entertaining film at the very least. Hmm. And, I mean, in terms of its reviews, I'm pretty sure it's getting very good. Like, very good. But I don't know what that's worth, I guess. Uh, wrote a video game review for my college English final and got a 94. Having watched EFAP for a couple of years helped, I'm sure. Thank you all. Here's some money to keep the content going. Oh, man. Thank job, you. Good job, man. Nah. But for attributing that to us in any way. That's good job. 94. That's a lot of Very numbers. Very good. good. Yeah. Um, good job. Thank you. I'd just like to point out, Fringy never explained himself after the Tonberry revelation was made public. What? Tonberry? Like a meme I'm getting. I assume if it's might be. Uh, it's the, no, the Final Fantasy critter with uh, the knife in the hood. Hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> that was really funny. Those were those were scary in a. They were event. they were both scary and um, endearing. Yeah, like they they seem unassuming, but I think they could only move like two spaces. So they were very slow, but they had a move that would take away 90% of your ha uh, your HP. Really? Jesus. So that's like, fun, don't, fun, do fun. not let no, them get you don't, close. You don't want to mess is, with a tonberry by yeah, the sound of it. That is a percentage-based move, so that shit scales. I wonder if it's a goo-like weapon they use on you. I think it's a knife-based weapon. With goo? Um, I don't think so. It might have some kind of poison on it, mm. which is why it's so... Well, Deadly. poison and goo are not synonymous, to be clear. You have rags. The fuck? I never said that they were. I just I said it might have some poison. Just or maybe it's just sure. really good with a knife. It knows where to stab you. Could be. Yeah. Let's 1v1 in StarCraft 2 rags. You'll probably win. I'm not great. I'm decent, but I'm not great. Um, Moon Knight finale, Majortism. Yes. Yeah. Major. Absolutely Majortism. Um, this one says, I don't think I can read this one. Joke's on you, I could. Dang it, Rags, I'm never sending him money again. What? I don't know, you must Why? have done what something. Why would I do? Must have, must have had an opinion about something. You bastard. Uh -oh. I... I'm not known for having opinions on things. And um, this one says, Today is Wednesday, May 4th, 2022. Uh, thanks for providing us with a little reference for how... 14 <laughs> days ago it was said. We are... You know, this could be worse. And um, with that completes one of the catch-ups we had to catch up on. And Sweet. Um, we've still got... Well, I mean, I may as well say... Uh, Good old EFAP community. Um, once upon a time, in a in a land far, far away, we had, I think the maximum we got to was seventy nine thousand words worth of reading to do for super chats, which is a lot. Um, now we've done many offline super chat catch ups at this point. We have, yes. Behind the scenes. They will all come out after all of the live ones come out. Um, now, not including the ones that have come in today, what we have left is exactly 4,400 words. So, um, yeah, we've cut that down quite we, a bit. We've cut it down. We've, we're making progress, all right? That should take approximately... An average of about three hours to, to complete that, and then it'd probably be an hour before it came in today. So, um, we're ending, aren't we, more? Well, I guess, I, f I feel this is a good position. Like um, three, when we get to three to four and we complete a block, that's when I'm like, it's probably a good idea to end. Um, 
But yeah, there are about eight, I think, EFAP minis that are uploaded and ready to be released that are just, and they're all labeled properly, so you know where they come out. And they'll just be released each week, but we are on the verge, people. On the verge of having Wednesdays without catch up in them. This close to greatness. 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 <laughs> this close to greatness. We're this close to greatness. Um, this close to greatness. It's within our group. And what will happen on Wednesday instead will either be that the three of us uh, record some kind of EFAP movies or do some different thing for EFAP offline, or I'll just stream a video game. I might make Wednesday the game day that I stream on, on, on the main channel. Uh, assuming we don't have Super Chats to catch up on, but it's going to be crazy. We'll finally get to the point where Wednesdays won't have to be Super Chat catch up because of the fact that we're behind. Been, uh, yeah. been, it's been, it's been crazy. So uh, today's ones, I will grab them up, put them in our backlog. Myself, Rags, and Fringy have probably got either one or two more offline ones to do at about two to three or four hours each. How um, exciting! No EFAB games? No, that that could happen too. EFAB gaming could become a Wednesday thing, maybe as well. Um, what about today's? They shall be gotten to. Uh, what we've got left is this catch up. A catch up previous to the catch up we did, and the Loki EFAP is the only EFAP left for us to catch up on. We've done every other one. <laughs> That's kind of uh, funny. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so who knows? Maybe by the time the next time we, we speak to you guys on, on Saturday, we will have uh, completed our backlog and then we'll create more because maybe, I don't know maybe. that we'll be able to get through all of Halo with the guests we have and all mm. of the super chats. And all the content that we need to talk yeah. about. Halo so. is Halo is thick with very problems. thick. Um, so yeah, there's just no good scenes. I don't know what I would highlight as a good scene in that show. To be honest, I don't, I don't know. What a good scene. I agree. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, they, I'll grab all the ones that came up today. We'll we'll be uh, addressing them alongside the others soon. Not sure exactly when. But like I said, it'll be uh, properly labeled. Thank you so much for joining us and for the kind donations and messages. Like I said, Saturday, you shall see us returned. Uh, you'll see me as well tomorrow on Open Bar. I think Drinker wants to have a chat about the She-Hulk trailer, and I don't blame him, as well as some other stuff. So you'll see me there, and you'll see us on Saturday to talk about Halo with, like I said, guests. And the only one I'll confirm for now is John, because <laughs> he's a jet and he likes Halo. He's uh, he's gonna be the one that talks about his love for the show while we will be the more critical side. He's um, he's really appreciated. I think he's even said that it kind of like outshines the game in every way, right? Really? Yeah, 100%. Look at he's got his little smiley face. Wow, I and expect better of you. That's, I'm uh, very disappointed. Okay, it's an okay position to take. All right. Well, it's it's totally fine. See, you said it's Still literally friend, perfect. But I mean, it's literal perfection. But okay, that's it. Anything you guys want to say before we uh, before we go? I got nothing for you. You know, I think we've said enough. We've done our damage. All right then. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Have a good night. Yeah. See you later.